Welcome to Las Vegas. The PGT PLO series continues with the Event 8 final table, and we have a stacked final table for you today. It should be a very good one, as the buy-in is $15,000 for this event, and the first place prize is $348,600, so quite a lot of money up for grabs today, and the stacked lineup that will be competing for that top prize will get introduced shortly. My name is Rem Karinkama, Donnie Peters alongside me, and we have a very special guest that I'll get to in just a second, but please know you might learn a thing or two on today's stream. Alex Foxen on top for now, 3.6 million chips. Lou Garza, winner of the 10K PLO with the WSOP last year. Michael Dueck, third place finisher in the main event not too long ago. Elis Parsonen, former winner of an event in this very series. And of course, at the bottom of the counts, but don't count him out just yet, Mr. Eric Seidel, 10 time WSOP. SOP bracelet winner, he is in the mix as well. The final six guaranteed $62,250, but of course, everyone eyeing that top prize of $348. And as you always are accustomed to here on our show, we dive straight into the action. No nonsense, hand number one already in progress. Good time for me to introduce our special guest, Mr. Fernando Habegger, better known as Jay Nandes by most, the brains behind PLO Masterminds, and of course, I want to let you know that if you want to try them out, go to plomastermind.com slash poker go, sign up for free, and start practicing your pot limit Omaha game. Fernando, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to have okay. have have a sharp mind in the booth. We, we tried it with Adam Schwartz, of course. He was a few glasses of wine in. We got some insights from him. Donnie and I do our best with pot limit Omaha, but this, of course, is your forte. No wine today yet. <laughs> <laughs> yet. 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 We don't know how long this is going to go, but we obviously have some very experienced players. For example, Alex Foxen, and I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how No Limit and PLO players battle it out today. Yeah, so my first question for you, what's your experience with these players? Do you have any specific insights in, into maybe playing styles or, or maybe even something that happened this week? Oh, sure. I played most of the events. I skipped only one day, so I'm familiar with the whole lineup. I would say... We have a lot of aggressive and very experienced players on the table. Mickey not afraid here on screen to uh, pull the trigger if necessary. Elis or Elis Parsinen is a PLO specialist, but also a tournament specialist. He knows how to handle the big stack. Today, though, he plays a 20 big blind stack to start things off. So it will be very interesting to see if he's going to back off a little bit because he kind of has to if he considers ICM. But you never know with these guys because they might just play for the win and trying to build a big chip lead because that's where their comfort zone is. Um, so as far as Mickey and Alice is considered, there are loose and aggressive and capable. Uh, Lou, <laughs> Lou Garza is a player I played against yesterday. He is not afraid to play a lot of hands pre. He's Something active, he's out there, well. uh, familiar playing uh, high stakes. I mean, he, he won the 10K main for over a million dollars just recently. Um, so certainly used to the stage. And then Zhao and Seidel, I uh, would classify them as tournament players who are very familiar with ICM. So uh, they sort of like tack in some ways together. And then Alex Foxen is coming in as the big stack. And I would say he's obviously a tournament player and experience in that. But also he's been playing a lot of PLO lately in terms of tournaments here at BGT. Um, so interesting to see how he's, going to, how he's going to perceive the chip lead in this uh, six-handed setup. Yeah, definitely curious to see how all this will play out. Foxen, of course, the No Limit Specialist, Parsonen, winner of an event earlier in this series. Uh, Donnie, you must be excited to see that Parsonen owns more than one of these uh, funky sweaters. Well, this is his third one. <laughs> I think I'm happier to see that he's brought in the shades. Yes. That means he's going to win, right? That's just how it works out. It's, it's, it's the uh, you know be seen? Uh, shades handed out by the Finnish uh, government Why's to make sure that their players perform optimally at on? these final tables. Oh, that's uh, like Fernando said, though, I am yeah. interested yeah. in Elis because every time we've seen him, not only this series, but the last series, he comes into the final table with a massive chip so lead, nice. and he just runs over the table. Here, like Fernando said, Everyone on the shorter the side, at least for what we're used to seeing with him. So once the the, the interesting part about this is that Seidel is even shorter. <laughs> right? Seidel has 12 big blinds, Elis on 18. That is a significant difference of 50%. So ICM-wise, uh, Elis should be a bit careful here and maybe wait it out until Seidel is all in. But on the other side, again, if he thinks he has a big edge, if he can claim the big stack, he might just play aggressive and try to spin it up. 
Action on Sidella after Foxen raises with the queen, 9-8-6, double suited. Everyone brought shades. Yeah, it's a table full of shades, except for Foxen, of course, who's used to the bright lights. Uh, Zhao Samao from Brazil in the mix here for the first time at the final table this series. Foxen, by the way, you'll notice his uh, left arm is on the rail. May not be moving too much because he has a torn pec muscle oh, wow. from bench pressing recently. So um, <laughs> if his left arm is kind of just stationary throughout the day, that's that's why. <laughs> He's saying from benching, but it's probably from raking in too many <laughs> chips. Well, I asked him uh, how it happened, and he said he was warming up on three <laughs> on three twenty-five. Oh, warming uh, up, <laughs> which is three plates for Hercules the European listeners. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> he did. He didn't say it, it didn't really hurt. Like he kind of just felt it pop. But I mean, the guy he just must be made of steel or something. Uh, short stack PLO strategies, Fernando, you know, focusing on Seidel here for a little bit. Um, how different does preflop become? Are you still trying to see flops because, you know, you could right. maybe flop a big draw, wrap, whatever? Or is it more so the case of trying to get as much in preflop to remove some of the decision making? Generally speaking, you want to raise large because you don't necessarily try to see the flop. And for example, Mickey here raises ace king nine nine, nine to pot, Start which I think is the, the right bet size. He wants to just take down the blinds. If someone does defend or call, uh, make it as expensive as possible, especially with the ante in the middle. The price people would be getting if you raise smaller pretty is so good, and the equities run so close that you kind of don't achieve what you're trying to achieve, which is just take down the blinds more frequently. And uh, actually, Alex here defends against a pot size open with the chip lead, maybe thinking he could put some pressure on post-flop against Mickey, because ICM is a concept that continues post-flop. It just doesn't just end pre-flop. Obviously, on this flop, we're not going to see much else than just a bet at a fold, I would imagine, at least. Yeah, the ace-10 jack rainbow flop, very much in the wheelhouse of the pre-flop razor. Foxen is going to be very much aware of that. He, of course, is just calling to flop something strong and apply that pressure. Exactly. The pre-flop ranges are much more obvious when the, sh when the stacks are shorter in the sense that Removal effects, uh, having an ace, yeah, having a king is a uh, key part of the open racing strategy. Congrats. When you play and you're used to Thanks, PLO cash games, Probably you will you see rundowns, double suited hands, double paired hands, like 5-5-4-4 five, five, four, four, or 8-7-6-5. Those hands do well when you're 80 big blinds, 100 big blinds, 200 big blinds deep. But when you're short, like most of the players on this table, what matters a lot more is that you block Perfect. aces yeah, by too. holding an ace and that you can flop yeah. top pairs. What about you? Uh, I've had these for a while. I'm saying, <laughs> before this tournament. <laughs> uh, that's a completely different question. <laughs> but yeah. So we're in the same boat. I don't know if I'd say that. We're in the same boat. Whatever makes you feel better. <laughs> I feel like Mickey Duex going to play Alex Foxen's annoying little brother. This has a very strong hand for the stack size and play here. Ace, king, seven, six, double. We call this hand with good suits. So the ace and the king have a different suit. You can make an ace high flush with hearts and a king high flush with diamonds. He just goes for the pot size open raise, which again, even though your hand is strong, <laughs> this is not no limit where you have aces you want to get called and you want to double through. You want to make it as attractive as possible for your opponents to defend. Because Elis is not in last position here. He's trying to just pick up the chips and continuously build a gap between himself and Seidel. And he picks up a pot here, which uh, is exactly what he's trying to do. Every chip going to matter here for Parson and separate himself from Seidel as best he can. And the concept and the idea of high cards is no different to No Limit Hold'em. We all love the 7 8 suited and the by four suiteds. We love making straights and deceptive full houses. But the reality is if you have only 20 big blinds and hold them, what you really need is you need a hand that can flop top pair. And if your opponent has middle pair, you're going to make some chips. Or if your opponent is outkicked, the same story. 
And that, that it does continue, <coughs> and it's quite similar to PLO, where if you have an ace, an ace-king-queen hand, you're going to flop top pair if you do flop a pair, and the hand will be good enough to just bat and pot and go with it. Shani and that's what we're trying to do here. I think that means Sean Winter might be uh, in the room. That's not awkward at all. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you still have cards? Yeah. Okay. So we got Fox in with 10, 9, 8, 7. Both options are possible. You can raise, you can fold. Raising is not going to hurt him much. Mickey should not be 3 betting many hands, and Seidel is very short. So it doesn't matter too much if Seidel defends or jams or calls. Ideally, Foxen wants Seidel to survive because he's Seidel is the ticket for Foxen to pick up a lot of blinds from the other players. Here comes Seidel. Raises the pot. Foxen puts it in. And here we go. Seidel is going to be at risk here up against Alex Foxen. As Fernando pointed out earlier, and we've been talking about throughout the week, equities tend to yeah, always run very up. close, <laughs> as you can see on your screen. Yeah, so this is a kind of a classic example of no limit versus PLO. In PLO, you're, you're looking here to flip. And mm. I personally would have just called inside L's shoes to then jam some of the flops, because you can generate fold equity. Your opponent might fold on the flop. However, if you 3-bet now pre with your 12 big blinds, Foxen will never fold, and that doesn't help you if you only have 50% equity. However, Seidel flops well. Top pair against bottom pair, which is exactly what you want and why you have, why you have high cards when you jam, generally speaking. Yeah, Seidel looking pretty good here. 71% equity now to double up. Queen of clubs here on the turn. You guys can see the outs at the top of your screen for Foxen. A jack, an eight, or a seven. Three of spades is not one of those cards, and the legendary Eric Seidel is going to double up. Exactly one million chips, which is 25 big blinds. That is a workable stack for sure. And Seidel has a completely new situation at the moment. He is uh, close to the <laughs> middling field, Elise is behind him, and uh, he also has maneuverability now post flop with the stack. Yeah, as Fernando mentioned, will be Parsoner now on the short stack. Kind of close to Seidel, but still the shortest stack remaining. Foxen takes a hit, but he's still over three million. Still the chip leader here. Four hundred exactly after posting the blind. I'm just really confused. There must have been purple chips there. I think you start, you start with 550, right? Started with 510. Started the day with 510. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think the chips magically appeared. I just. <laughs> yeah. Could have sworn I saw 400. So I turned my hand over prematurely there. I just. Whatever. Didn't matter. Sounds like Alex Fox in there had a different idea of how deep Seidel was. But nonetheless, don't think he was really going to go anywhere and paid the chips. Garza picks up an ace under the gun. He has an ace high suit. This is a very reasonable hand to raise to 140k. But sizing is something people approach differently. So we'll see. Some players will limp here. Some people make it 100K. Some people make it 140K. Right, 140,000. Does come in for the full pot, does Garza. We've kind of seen a little bit of everything throughout the week. You know, we've seen plenty of limps. We've seen people come in 3X. We've seen people just say pot. Seidel here in the small blind, fresh off his double up. King, Jack, Jack, seven. It's a dangerous hand. Good fold, I think so. Doesn't have the king high suit, doesn't block aces. And Elis picks up the bottom 
5%, 3%, bottom 1% hand and folds up is huh? 10, 5, 5, deuce, rainbow. Oh. Ace. No, it's a three. There we go. Good job. They just drew for hands. Three more hands until the blinds go up. <coughs> this is the final table of event eight. $15,000 buy in here at the PGT PLO series presented by PLO Mastermind. Yeah, that's why you're running good. Hmm? That's Thank why you're running good. How much yeah. are you playing with? How much do I have? 1.75. And Eric, you are about the melee? Okay, thanks. Zhao picked up a7555 double under the gun. It's a reasonable open. He does block aces, he does have playability, but it is not unreasonable to fold as well, given that he's one of the middling stacks. Mickey now opens with king 8, 7, 6. This is certainly considered very wide, and Seidel has a snap 3 bet. You don't really want to call this hand without an ace high suit, and you should have a lot of fold equity pre, given that you still have 25 big blinds. Well. Seidel wants to call. This tells me that he is probably valuing ICM and seeing a flop first higher than just gen generating fold equity pre. He might also think that Mickey doesn't fold that much against three bets, which is another possibility. And Lou has a very defendable hand in the big blind. This is not one of the hands you want a three bet. You don't block aces, you flop well in a single race pot, makes the call and we see a three way flop. Three hundred and sixty thousand out there between these three. Garza first to act. King Jack four rainbow. Mickey flop top pair, uh, which sounds kind of good, but if you think about the ranges in play, Seidel shouldn't have low rundowns. He should have a lot of Broadway hands that he calls on the button with if he plays good. And indeed, he does have a pair of wrap. And then Garza also has a pair of wrap. Mickey only has the king blocker, decides to make this bet. 100,000 is the wager from Duek. Action now on Seidel as he studies. Seidel should think about if he can make a better hand fold, then raising is fine. Calling is also an option for sure. I believe Seidel said pot, which means we are raising. Action now on Garza. So this could be kind of a dream spot for Seidel if he gets it in against Garza. He's dominating with the better kicker and has the same straight outs. I mean, yeah, he runs a queen. Uh, a queen 10 9 into an ace queen 10 uh, with the ace queen versus the queen jack. So, if Lou wants to quote unquote gamble here, he might actually put this in, and that would be an absolute dream spot for Seidel, who then gets Duek to fold a king by getting it in with the dominating draw. If you're in Garza's shoes, you know, how concerned do you have to be about Duek still to act behind you? Usually, at least one player is going to have a hand like top two, top set and you're going to be sort of flipping against that hand, which is exactly what you don't want in a tournament spot where you have ICM in play. So this is a spot to pass up on, but it is obviously very tempting. Good fold. Action over to Duek. He also folds a little bit more flamboyantly there, and Seidel rakes this one. So it's been a good couple of hands for Eric Seidel. Two hands ago, he got the double up. Now he wins a decent pot here. He's up over 1.3 million. Essentially tie the Zhao Samao, and then that pushes Parson in, you know, a little bit further down the leaderboard, at least in terms of the gap between him and the other players. Eric Seidel came into today with 510,000, so it's been a good day for him so far. There you see Elis Parsonen. He won event number two at this series. 
successfully defended his title from winning it the last time we had the PGT PLO series. Fox in here, ace king, queen nine, first to act. He's holding the three key blockers to a raising range, ace, king, and queen, <coughs> solid open. Makes it 100k, so he's not gonna go for the pot size approach. This is still very reasonable if he thinks if his opponents are kind of handcuffed given the stack size distribution. Lou now with a premium hand, ace, king, queen, nine, double. Even though this looks similar to Foxen's hand with the two suits, this hand is going to be a hand that you can three bet, usually should three bet. Foxen's range is wide. I would just call in Lou's shoes because I think Foxen might call pretty wide here. And you have two, two valuable of a stack yeah, that's a good under. to put yourself in a position where you bust There's out kind of frequently. Okay. And it certainly would not be easy having to play out of position pretty deep, you know, where Foxen, who is obviously known to be very good, very aggressive, can put a lot of pressure on you. Ace, queen, deuce here, two clubs, one diamond. Garza does have those backdoor diamonds. Both players flopping top two pair here. Garza first to act, and I believe he checked over to Foxen. Both players are still very deep, so we shouldn't see a check raise by Garza, but just a call. 110,000 from Foxen. Garza makes the call. Pot now up to half a million. Seven of diamonds on the turn. Nice looking card for Garza's hand. Garza checks once again over to Foxen. Foxen should still have a good enough hand to value bet. He sees the clubs out there. He sees the diamonds out there. A6 of diamonds makes sense. There are several club draws he wants to get value from or deny equity from, so we should see another bet. Pot could be reasonable. Certainly anything between half pot and pot uh, is what we should see here. And I think Garza, as hard as it sounds, he still does not want to jam in my eyes because there's a good chance he's going to run into pocket aces or queens by the time he gets called. Mm -hmm. But he keeps his opponent's bluffs in by just calling. Foxen came with 425,000, so a little bit less than the pot. Garza asked the dealer there what was in the pot. It's a bit more than 80% of the pot by Foxen. We could see a raise. I think it's not, it's certainly in the in the cards and not unreasonable. But I would say the standard, given that this is an ICM heavy spot, is going to be called. That is exactly what Garza comes with. Pot swells to 1,350,000. Jack of clubs here on the river. Both both players hate this card, obviously. But little do they know that they're going to split this pot if it goes check, check. Check, check. Super. I'm top two. <laughs> Chop it up, boys. I thought in PLO there were no chops. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This is not what I signed up for. Uh, shout out to everyone watching right now. We have over 1,500 people already tuned in. Let's smash that like button. Let's subscribe to the channel. Do all that good stuff. We hit 550K subscribers on the YouTube channel during this PLO series. So very excited to have you all with us. We post daily clips. We have tons of live streaming. And we have a whole bunch more good stuff going on as well on the channel. Uh, please, as a reminder, as you're watching this, the uh, third voice on the show today, Mr. Jay Nandes himself, Fernando Habegger, the man behind PLO Mastermind. So check out plomastermind.com slash poker go. Sign up for free and start practicing right now. I think this is a good moment hand. here, huh? Fernando, to ask you about PLO Mastermind. If you're new to it and you're just signing up, what do you what do you get? Half the pot. The PLO Mastermind is a coaching site that offers over 1,300 <laughs> videos about four card, five card, and six card PLO. That, Small stakes, mid stakes, high stakes, live PLO <laughs> tournaments are included. And a big part of our offering is the PLO Trainer, which is our software, which includes hundreds of thousands of sims 
So if you are someone that is looking for PLO sims, for example, what hands do you open race under the gun? What hands do you defend with? <coughs> if you want to find hundreds of thousands of flops, then our software is doing just that. It really started as a coaching site with videos, but nowadays I would consider PLO Mastermind to be primarily a software business. And uh, we do have seven active coaches making videos about PLO, but the thing is, oftentimes, beginning players they do need more guidance and professional players they need the best software on the market which is what we cater to as well yeah tons of good stuff going on there and i would say i, I would still consider myself a beginner when it comes to pot limit omaha despite having called the action on so many of these final tables just because to me as someone who's played much more hold'em there's so much uncertainty in so many situations where your hold'em brain tries taking over and you need to almost retrain yourself you know seven card stud is so different from texas hold'em that it's completely different in how you approach it but hold'em and plo have a lot of similarities which makes it harder to differentiate if you're leaning so much towards one game yeah, absolutely. There's there's some concepts that overlap, but other ones are also different. We actually have an interesting hand here for Zhao, cool. who finds kings. So Zhao is sitting on a bit more than 25 big blinds and goes for the flat with king, king, 10 deuce. I like this decision. He could also 3-bet. Would be much better if double suited or with an ace. So I, I don't mind this call, not blocking the aces. <coughs> and taking a flop here three ways now with Fox and coming along as well. We see Queen 9-8 on the flop, rainbow flop. Percentages show that Garza with two pair is out in front here. To me, to me it seems like Kings is, is one of those hands that is extremely difficult to play, more difficult than in Texas Hold'em. It certainly is. We call this visible equity. So King King 10 Deuce, for example, is hard to know where you're at because you don't have a combo draw, You d like not often at least. Even if you flop a set, by the time the river rolls around, unless you boat it up, it's hard to really know if you have the best hand or if you can value bet. Zhao with a lead out here on Queen 9-8. Not in favor of this play because he doesn't block a Queen in 9 or an 8 and he only has the 10 and the king. So I think this hand sort of is better to go for check call, but the board itself is good for the small band co calling range, but the blockers are not that great. Uh, Garza has flopped two pair and a gut shot. No reason oh. to race, just seeing the turn here and makes the call. Yeah, Fo Foxen got out of the way and Garza sh shot somehow a look, like a little bit of a smile, mm. like well, what are you doing over there, buddy? <laughs> Leading from the small blind is an essential part of the strategy because the small blind's calling range is very defined, similar to Hold'em. It's not like the big blind where you defend all sorts of stuff because of pot odds. And generally speaking, you do bad on the ace high boards, but good on the Broadway boards. And Queen 9 8 leans into the Broadway boards. Zhao now picks up a flush draw. He just wants to check here because he will not check, but he's, it's hard to make better hands that. fold, and he would like to see a river. I have a question. Yeah. What time is the reg open till? So, 2.75. Oh, 6.50. How much is the middle? 5.90 in the middle. So this was really How much long. would Garza be reading into the situation yeah. of, at least it appears, without knowing the cards, that Zhao is willing to put chips into this pot, and given the situation where the ICM is, with Parson and Bean on the much shorter side, does this look stronger than it might be to Garza, or, or how is that perceived? This looks very strong. There are two sides of this. One is, you got to ask yourself, what is he betting for value? In this case, he's representing seven, Jack seven, 10. Okay. So if he doesn't have Jack 10, what is he bluffing with? Maybe a hand like King Jack Jack or King 10 10, like King 10 10 9. So you kind of want to ask yourself, is it possible that he's bluffing those hands? He does make the best hand fold. And Garza's fold is not unreasonable at all, to be honest. I mean, he... We got chips now. As oh, you said, the it. meta here is Parsonin is short. Zhao, who has not played a hand so far, leads out against two opponents, fires big on a turn. It looks very strong. I wouldn't blame Garza here for the fold too much. This uh, final table is still at early stages. Things are developing. You want to 
kind of feel out how people are playing and how the stacks are developing. Lou Garza has no reason to take a big risk right now. That's gross. There you see the bruising from Alex Fox's torn pec muscle has extended down his bicep. I mean, his arms get bigger every <laughs> month, it seems like. It's unbelievable. <laughs> If, you, if you're watching this and you've never met Alex Foxen in person, he makes you feel so small when you stand <laughs> next to him. Well, like, how, does, how do you feel, Fernando? Because you're tall. Yeah. I'm do you feel, like, do you feel yeah. inferior to Alex Foxen? <laughs> you could take me down. <laughs> it's, it's funny, too, because I'm not short either. I'm 6'1". <laughs> but Alex Foxen, is there's so much human. Like, he's so <laughs> wide. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty narrow. I have very narrow shoulders. Um, so it's, it's pretty daunting, I feel like, if you're – at a table with someone, and I, I know you know these guys are all professionals, but I can only imagine that it adds at least a, a little, a little bit of extra flair to, uh, to his intimidation factor at the table. Oh yeah, for sure. Side L here with the race, Ace King ten six double suited. Okay, so this is something I struggle with. Wh wh when is a preflop hand in PLO a premium? Is this a is this a premium hand, Ace King double suited? So. Context is very important in PLO. So sometimes a hand can be premium. Let's say Ace King 10-6, or was it Ace King 10-3? 10-6. Yeah. So finding this hand under the gun is a premium because you're blocking aces. If you get called, you get called by hands you dominate. King Queen Jack 10, for example, right? Lower suits than you have. However, if you get three bets, you might run mostly into aces. And at which point you want to have a different hand to play against aces. So contextually, the hierarchy can change very quick, where you're very unhappy holding an ace once you face a three bet, but very happy to be three betting yourself or facing a caller. So context always matters when it comes to PLO hand strength. Parson in here with the ace queen nine four, almost in the same boat as the hand that Seidel just had. This hand is certainly a hand you want to open at this point. It's not as premium given the disconnectivity with the nine and the four, but you have the key blocker. Parsonin needs to pick up some chips. He doesn't have that much to lose given that he is the bottom stack. And he's just hoping to see a bunch of folds here. Maybe Seidel defends and he can double through on some favorable flop. Seidel double suited with flush cards that his opponent is not holding. Of course, he doesn't know that, but definitely makes this interesting. He does let it let it go. Is this a standard fold? It's a v ICM and PLO is very complicated. I would say, intuitively speaking, you could call. Maybe you should call. But uh, tournament poker is not a solved game. Even ICM, ICM is just a concept. Just it's a distribution of chips in a payout structure. However, ICM doesn't understand poker. That's what a lot of people don't know. Like even if you look at an ICM sim or you talk about ICM and the importance of it, ICM doesn't understand poker. It doesn't understand future game. What happens in the next hand? What if you win chips? ICM is a static look at a distribution of chips and a payout structure, and it tells you how to play each hand if, as if this would be the last hand to be played. But poker continues. What, for example, in this case, Elis is now under the gun, uh, is in the big blind, so he has to pay a big blind. ICM doesn't know that. And because of it, ICM generally tends to be tighter than what we would suggest as professionals to play at. But the margins are close. And, and on the other side, people perceive edges in different ways. For example, if you're in a table where people just fire and they just are trying to win all the chips, <coughs> you're incentivized to play tighter. If you think that you play post flop a lot better, you're incentivized to take more flops, maybe limp in, raise smaller prey. So there's a lot of creativity that comes into play here from all the players. And that's also the beauty of poker. Even though you have modern tools, shout out to PLO Mastermind, but you have modern <laughs> tools like solvers, it doesn't mean that creativity goes out of the window it is just another tool to enable more creativity.
All right, speaking of PLO Mastermind, right on cue here with the promo, uh, learn to win at PLO for free. That's the man in the booth right there. Good little photo. Shout out to Antonio Abrego for that. Uh, PLOMastermind.com slash PokerGo. Sign up now, sign up for free, and start working on your Pot Limit Omaha game. If you have any questions about PLO Mastermind, please send us send those to us Simple in the chat. Oh, okay. I, I'm sure Fernando is more than happy to him. answer some <laughs> specifics as well. They seem like they might. But, uh... Back to the table here. Still six-handed if you're just tuning in. Final six are battling for a hefty prize pool today of $348,000. Also, the 25K PLO, our championship event, kicks off today, already underway in our main room. And so far, we've seen 34 players enter. Re-entries possible there as well. And uh, Mr. Jason Kuhn is in the mix, a player we haven't seen during this series up until now. Isaac Haxton also here for the finale of the PGD PLO series and tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern, we'll be streaming that final table and Fernando is joining us for that as well. So, you know, if you're not yet a subscriber to our YouTube channel, please make sure to do so and turn on those notifications so you immediately know when the action is happening. Okay, it's under 25, action on Fox in here. If you are the chip leader, a bit more aggression warranted and it always, always helps to find double suited cards. Yeah, the Ace King 8 7 with the nut suit against Foxen. It is a really good spot to 3 bet for Seidel. But it really comes down to you. Do you think eyes. that Foxen is race folding enough often to make this sort of semi bluff? <laughs> but if I would have to guess how a sim would look like, uh, how a computer uh, would play this hand, it would just 3 bet prey. <laughs> <laughs> Leveraging the Ace King blockers. I don't even know what you mean by like that, but I didn't take it any, any <laughs> negative way. <laughs> that is a big Got flop from Foxen. Flops top hair and a gut shot and a queen high flush draw. Garza would defend. Garza defended pre, which did, does make sense given the small race sizing. Just getting incredible odds. They're still playing deep post flop. Are you surprised to see Fox and check here? Just pure check control it makes a lot of sense. If you check back, you mainly want to have hands that can call turns. And this hand can call turns on many on many runouts. Uh, but at the same time, if you do face a check raise, you would be in a pretty tough spot. You do have top pair and you do have a flush drop, but the hands that want to check raise the flop often dominate you. So the check back is understandable. Now things have changed though. He has turned trips. He reduces a lot of the combinations that beat him, like Jack-10, for example. And at the same time, he wants to also deny or charge, deny equity or charge hands with diamond draws and combo draws. He can still get called by hands like Pocket Kings, a 10 with a flush draw like Garza has here. So it's time to bet this turn for Foxen. So a question I have here, something that comes up all the time. A lot of times in PLO, you hear, don't draw to something that's not the nuts. And on a, drawing to a flush on a paired board seems to be asking for trouble. Is this something that Garza can do because he's a very high level player? And would you say to a beginning player, even if you turn a flush draw on a paired board, it's better just to be conservative? For all the live player audience that plays four-handed post-flop situations, if the board pairs, you're in trouble. If you're up against one player on the flop and that player oh. check back, the context is different. Foxen doesn't have a lot of boats in his range. He could still have diamond bluffs at this point. He could have a hand like he has where Lou is still drawing live. So context, again, matters a lot. But generally speaking, the more players are on the flop, the less often you want to continue on a paired board when you're drawing. River card brings the nine of hearts, giving Foxen the straight. Garza so checks and probably giving up here. Foxen could be scared of King Queen. There are some boats out there. He's probably good, but he also has to ask himself what hand that is weaker will make this river call. And that's also another concept a lot of people sometimes don't think enough about, which is when you value bet the river, it means that you're assuming your opponent calls at least 50% of the time with a worse hand. So what Foxen is doing here is he's assuming that Garza can call this river and be and, and Foxen being good more than 50% of the time. For example, by 7-8, which would be a lower straight, maybe just a jack. 
over 10-9. Gives him a little spark. Five eighty-five in the middle. Five extension. Could Garza ever come with a check raise here? I think given the antics, it seems very unlikely, but it would look very strong. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when people start talking and interacting, they don't raise you anymore. But it will look strong, that's for sure. Garza says, no thank you. Alex Foxen will pull that one in. Oh my god. Back off over three million for him. You're so good at poker. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Mickey Duak is taking the role of Isaac Kempton on this table. I said he's he's I mean he's in the same seat that Kempton was in. Yeah, exactly. You know? I said he's he's in a way the annoying little brother to, <laughs> to Alex Foxen. <laughs> I do like his shades though. Mickey Duak. I think he brought those off for the first time yesterday. I mean, lots of good shades at this table. Lou Garza is wearing a pair that probably costs more than my mortgage. <laughs> Lou Garza is the king of bling when it comes to <laughs> Paul in Omaha. Call him Sweet Lou for a reason. Exactly. Man. Fernando reminded me of this. Uh, proposed to his yeah. his girl when he won his bracelet. Yeah. I mean, that's that's about as cool as it gets. You're, you're definitely guaranteed that you have enough camera footage there for, <laughs> for that moment. <laughs> yep. He hired the most expensive production yeah. to uh, document <laughs> yeah, his Yeah, but he proposal. didn't have to pay for it all, and right. any of it. Smart. <laughs> hey, it's Kings for Sadell comes in for the raise. Yeah, the so this is a hand that, for example, in ICM terms, yeah. you just want to limp. But it's very counterintuitive to people to think, oh, I have kings. Oh, wow, this is the reason, I guess. <laughs> because you might run into the blades of Elis who picks up an yep. absolute monster, not only because he has aces, but he's sharing cards <laughs> with Seidel. He's holding a king. He has ace jack. <coughs> he's holding the spades. Not sure what Eric is going to do here. What? Yeah, well. two, 205 behind. Oh, sorry. Here's one. Getting three bets in PLO when you have kings is an absolute nightmare. And this is the reason. Uh, oh, there it is. Seidel is decides to go really for it. And this is That's trouble. <laughs> Got a king too. Parson and looking like the purple people eater <laughs> in that sweater of his, and he might eat up. A chunk of yeah. Eric Seidel's stack here oh, with 1.6 million in the middle. Thank if God, the I cards were correct pre-flop, Jossamal folded the other king, yes. so <laughs> you were Seidel's going to need a lot of help you here. Hearts, on your trip. Hearts of that 10 high yeah, straight is sort of the best yeah, thing that Seidel can hope for. Seidel I does have I the covering stack, so top three cards with 10 Parson and is at risk. Four, four, five, over here. As casual as they come oh. is Parson and is flicking his hat up and down. Not a care in the world. <laughs> Here comes Just the flop. Fuck, I told you. Eight, six, Just queen, two spades. Do Parson with the nut spades. Uh, Seidel still red. have four yeah. outs. I mean, could be I worse. Like, I feel like there are some worse <laughs> flops for Seidel. Jack Man. of hearts makes hearts. it interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just go back to a royal. <laughs> <laughs> Just go runner, runner. Turn card. The three of clubs. Not going to change things. Seidel looking for four outs to send the fin to the rail. Uh -oh. If Seidel doesn't hit, we're going to have some real exciting <laughs> poker coming up because Parson is not known he to play slow. <coughs> Rivercart incoming. Nine of diamonds. Fox and calling for the nine of diamonds. He'd rather see the fin go. Oh River is God. the queen of oh. diamonds, and Parson gets the win. I guess. Fernando, this is trouble for the rest of the table. This guy is, is very sharp and very aggressive. It could very well be. And the positions are also interesting. So Seidel is very short. He's sitting to the... I mean, on his left is Elise. 
So Seidel is not going to raise too much pre, probably, which gives Elis a lot of options to just steal the blinds and apply pressure. Could see that. On no, the other another, side... Another thing it does is it's kind of a benefit to Fox. Better than I With covered. Seidel being so short, Fox and having that chip lead, now he can just kind of handcuff the rest of the table as long as Seidel is there with that very short stack. I was about to say, that's definitely the other side of the coin is Fox and dominating chip lead still 64 big blind steep at this point. In his shoes, starting to open race pot, certainly, certainly valuable. And for the other players, they might want to take some shots against yeah, Eric because Eric. having Eric in the game is bad for all the mid stack players here. Let's okay, thanks. So if, if Eric opens the button, let's say, and Lou Garza is in the big blind, he might consider calling I'm a bit wider really and uh, do do about give him and the other Could mid stacks be. the chance to to be. eliminate uh, uh, the, the shorter stack player. Dual purpose. This hand sort of illustrates how aggressive Elis wants to approach this. Foxen is in the big blind. Foxen is going to defend relatively sure wide. And this is, base, this is a oh statement God. by Elis that he, he so is right. not yet there where he wants to just bli blindly apply pressure no, with any ace in the cutoff. Garza yeah, is known to play hands pre. Foxen is known to play hands pre. And he makes this fold here, which okay. seems on the surface like a normal fold, but as you saw, he was tanking about it. So he's he's still on his heels a little bit here. One six twenty five. I mean, the, the way we've seen Helos play, I mean, that's 100% an open. That's <laughs> most a, most of the time. Such a nitty fold for him. <laughs> such a nitty fold. One, I feel like he five. hated it, too. I mean, he, he wants <laughs> to be in there. <laughs> This is spicy. So Foxen with the ISO. This <laughs> no sort of reminds me of a hold and play where you pick up 7-3 off and you're just trying to get rid of junk. In PLO, it doesn't work as well because Jao will limp probably the entire range. And there are a bunch of good hands in there. Maybe Foxen thinking that Samao is has been a bit too passive, have, has not been involved too much, and he feels as though with a raise and a stab on the flop, a lot of the times he's going to get away with this. He does have position, for sure. So they're going to the flop heads up after a raise by Fox, and, and we do have top pair for Alex, and we do have a gut shot for Zhao Simao. Foxen wants to think about how does his hand play when he checks back. Are there turns he will have difficulty realizing equity? Will he get pushed off his hand? He can't leverage the king right now and just bet. He rarely will get raised. His opponent would need a hand like king nine, obviously king king or other sets, which he is cooked against anyway. So bet folding the king eight four deuce, not a big deal, but leveraging the king to block the best parts of Simao's range. It's a good point to start betting. And as you can see, Simao does have 35% equity. So getting this hand to fold is certainly a win. Simao does make the fold with the, with the gut shot. I thought that was your limp hot spot. Cool. Kind of felt like it was coming. I just say skin queen. What can I do? Nah. Eh. Hope for the jack 10 nine. That's all you can do. Then you better hope it's rainbow too. I think you had a good <laughs> shot in a pair of the flop. Fairly close. Better though. Probably better than you thought. If you're just tuning in for the first time, this is the six handed final table. $15,000 buy in. Wrong. The remaining. Yeah. Players are guaranteed sixty-two thousand dollars, and no. the winner will get almost <laughs> three hundred fifty thousand. A pair. A pair is a pair. Yeah. The best. If you're enjoying the content, please smash that like button Shit. and subscribe to our channel. We have the twenty-five k final table tomorrow night, which should be a stacked one as well, with tons of money on the line. And uh, Seidel, sort of back where he started this final table. Now sitting on eleven big blinds. Action on Garza. 
interesting hand here for Garza, Fernando. Th this, to me, sort of feels like it's it's either really good or really bad, depending on the action you generate with it. Yeah, this hand is a good hand to steal the blinds. Not a good hand to call a raise in position. The three clubs really hurt the value of your hand, so to speak. So, so once again, two, another right? example of a blocker here in PLO, uh, especially PLO tournaments, where this hand wants to raise and Mickey will at least call, or pretty much always call, double suited and connected. Oh. Jack 7 8, two hearts on this flop. Mickey Duek with two hearts. Now, in PLO, leading out into the pre-flop raiser is a real thing, and it's very important. For example, here, Duek has a straight draw blocker, a flush drive pair. He has, a, he has a lot of stuff going on, and he runs into only top pair. But he still, if he bets out here, he gets Garza to full mm -hmm. top pair. He's getting 32% of the pot out, which is, which is a great result. And in PLO, because equities run close, and you have four cards, which means you have more information, you do want to leverage that kind of information to to narrow your opponent's range down to maybe hands that miss this plop and start leading. Do X hand makes sense to check. I'm just saying, in general, if the board is not ace high, you you should have some leads from the big blind to deny equity or build the pot. Let's say the board comes five, six, seven. It's a board where the big blind has a bunch of leads. So flop goes check, check, and Do X could just lean back with a pair of sevens. <laughs> and assume we might have the best hand. But I think it's better to just bet on the turn <laughs> and apply maximum pressure to kings and aces that he's unblocking as well at the same time that just can't call against a large bet. Is it obvious here for Duak to lead the turn? Yeah, he's not blocking aces or kings. Aces and kings have a hard time calling on this structure of a board texture. And uh, this is the prime example. Garza has 43% with top pair. He does have currently the best hand. But how can you call? You're dead against 10-9. You're far behind against sets in two pairs. And even if you're ahead at this point, how can you call the river unless you improve significantly? Let's say the river is a king and your opponent pots. What are you going to do then? Des decides to make the correct call, though. And now we're going to see if uh, Duek unimproved, potentially. Oh, wow. Wow. Not straight flush. No, not even a straight flush. Damn it. I want it so bad. I want to see a straight <laughs> flush. It felt like so a bad. straight flush. If it, it, okay. <laughs> the, I'm gonna the nine is messing the with nine, you. I see, I see the nine, and I was like, oh, it's going to be a straight flush. <laughs> see, this is why I don't play pot limit on A flush is good enough. I mean, <laughs> I he, he has the hand. I would be pot, and then someone calls, and I'd be like, straight flush. <laughs> and then he's like, sir, you have a straight and a flush? They're not the same thing. Uh, joking aside here. Duek does hit his flush on the river. And checks. Yeah, interesting here to see him check. Wouldn't Garza be inclined to bet <laughs> a lot of his strong flush draws on the river? Or on the flop, excuse me? I don't think so, because if he has a head like ace, ace, five, four of hearts, and he gets ripped on the flop, I mean, he's never good, and he's just flipping coins for ICM. Oh, you're good. He goes for a big bluff with the four of hearts blockers, and Duek played this hand to perfection, winning a big pot here of 2.1 million. Wow. Mickey Duek taking a large chunk out of Lou Garza's stack by getting crafty on the river. Would you recommend checking the river wh when, when that heart hits? Because you don't have the nut flush? <laughs> so you either block and bet small or you, bet or you check. The th again, the, the, the concept for river bets is if you think your opponent can call with worse more than 50% of the time, you have a value bet. Uh, but it doesn't mean that betting outperforms checking. So what a lot of people don't know about uh, poker is two, it's all two, about five. opportunity costs. Checking has a certain one, value. Two, like two, in this two, case, five. you can check and bluff catch. Two, betting has a certain value. And have? what differentiates the three, good players from the great players is to know which line has no, more value. And in this case, he chose the right option. Also, this hand illustrates why yeah, like three, three, making marginal calls on the turn can sometimes backfire in a know. big way, because you might be inclined to turn your hand into a bluff like later on. Seven, yeah. And then 
Well, this is basically what we saw. Elis has a hand that he will definitely play. Yeah, on that hand, I mean, at least to me, it seemed like Garza called the turn having that showdown value with, with the jack, but then opted to take that showdown value on the river and turn it into a bluff, which is kind of a change of direction from how he approached one street versus the other, and it ultimately cost him a good chunk there on the end. Oh, here we go. This could be trouble. <laughs> Garza with premium blockers, ace, king, queen, queen. He's sitting on a bit less, like 18 big blinds or so, and Elias raises from under the gun. Now, this is where Elias' reputation could come into play. If Garza knows anything about Elias, he might think that Elias opens light, and he does go for the three bet pot. Now, the question will be when Elias back jams. No, there is no question. He is committed. He only has 300 left behind, 300k behind. And Elias in another premium spot finds himself in a dominating lead here with ace, ace, six, five against ace, king, queen, queen. Garza looking for the queen or spades. And it looked king. like two kings were dead for, mm. I believe, Foxen had two kings. Two kings? Yeah. King. Zhao had one king. I had ace, king. So I need king jack, too. And an ace. No. There's a lot of jacks and tens left then. Ace, two. Nine. Parson are looking to jump way up on the leaderboard. Winning here would put him into second you really place. Did. All the aces and kings are dead. That's pretty sick. That's <laughs> how quick it can go in tournaments. Lou was looking at a healthy ha stack. Floats one turn, bluffs the river. Next hand, he might be out. Aces versus queens. But it's not over yet. Jack A. Deuce here yeah, on the fun. flop. Yeah. Garza only with two <laughs> outs right now. Yeah. Does have some <laughs> backdoor potential. Nine of spades. Elis always wants season. max sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Calls for the ten of spades. <laughs> he just wants the pain. He wants to enjoy the ride. Turn card is the six of hearts. No mm -hmm. fun sweat developing here for Lou Garza. He's looking for a queen and a queen only to stay in this tournament. Garza, out the door, the six of diamonds the completes the board, and the winner of the 10K PLO at the WSOP is our first casualty <laughs> from this final table, and Elis Parsonen is on quite the rise here, yeah, now sitting on just like shy of 2.7 million yeah. chips as yeah, Lou Garza yeah. collects yeah. $62,000 yeah, for his sixth more. place finish. I'm sure we'll see him in the 25K championship event well, that is underway right now yeah, in the main room. The final five yeah, guaranteed, $87,150. Yeah. Also huge news for Eric Seidel, who came <laughs> in as a short stack and ends up surviving the first bust out. Five players left. Yeah, nice little pay jump for Seidel. Seidel did have that double early and was looking all right, and then <laughs> lost a big one doubling up this man right there. The Finnish star, Elis Parsonen. That's what it they feels say. good to get a get a pay jump like that. The most dangerous thing is an aggressive player with a good hand. That's right. We saw Elis with aces twice, and he he got yeah, action. Yeah, I mean it's just not fair when you're you got the reputation that Elis does, and then you just pick up two aces. I mean, it's, what are people going to do? How much you have? Two point five ish, right? Two, 2.6, 2.7 point point ish. <laughs> king King seven six for Samao. He is first act. One seventy five pot size raise. It's a tricky spot. Pretty sure it's supposed to be a fold with Seidel being this short, but it's just so hard to fold King's Prey if you're not deep in the PLO lap, I would imagine. So Simao makes the race, and he will get action hit by person because Elias doesn't like to fold, and he's going to play <laughs> post-flop. <laughs> this is kind of a nightmare already for Zhao, because Eric is so short, and now suddenly he has to play a flop. Jack, eight, deuce, all clubs here. Somehow is still best, but could feel a bit in no man's land here.
Larson and did I check. Like the so I have to ask, Fernando, when you're playing, are are you keeping track of the pot? Or are you also asking the dealer? <laughs> like what what you guys are all these guys are always asking the dealer. I have no clue what the pot is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's unbelievable. You got, you got more important things to worry about. <laughs> Like half my time banks is just looking at the pot <laughs> and look, counting the chips before it gets embarrassing. Okay. This so one, check, check on the flop. Eight pairs of the board on the river. That's so funny. Uh, Sidel, by the way, on nine big blinds, which really has to make. He's going to get like two more ladders, though. I mean, it's just that's how Sidel is. I mean, it's definitely possible. <laughs> These guys are all crazy, with the ex exception of Samao. Samal's been the conservative one. I don't know. Samal did that small blind leading on a couple of streets earlier into two players. Here he's playing the King King 7 6 under the gun. I mean, he, he seems like he's got a little <coughs> crazy in him. I'm just looking at our stat screen. He's only won one hand. Well, yeah. Everyone else has won three or four. <laughs> Carson, making sure there's no. Club's hidden there in there somewhere. And Samao takes one. this one down. 3.4. Smidge under. Mm -hmm. Smidge under 3, three, three 4. Uh, yeah, sounds right. <coughs> That's the second time Samao's gotten a yellow chip in a pot that he's won. He didn't happen in the first pot, and he's immediately given it to Alex Foxen. I feel like he must smidge. think those three, are bad three, luck or something. Five, five. I mean, <laughs> you, got, you, gotta ha you gotta have the most <laughs> chips possible, so. He well, then he should exchange the purples for blues. Three, five. Three, 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 three. Five, five. Oh. You left? You're my math guy, you know that? Yeah. So is David. <laughs> Fucking I love how you guys had a war of asking what's in the pot when no one had bet. He's like, what's in the pot? He's like, 425. 30 seconds later. Sorry, I'm not what's a nerd like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a raise and a call. Pretty easy to calculate. Thanks, man. <laughs> Gotta use that mental power on other things, though, I guess. You bit, yeah, okay. I just focus on one word. I mean, you only have that <laughs> this much capacity, you know? Like, you need to prioritize. The dealer knows sometimes. <laughs> I mean, the dealers have been spot on. Like, just in like a second, just ripping off the size of the pot here. Yeah, that Foxen works. comes in with a raise. So Foxen switching it up with a different sizing now. He goes for a pot with the aces. It's interesting to see if he's going to continue that. Yeah, earlier he was going two, two and a half, right? Yeah. yeah so. So Elias has a hand that we would call kind of street poker. If he wants to call the small blind here, it is reasonable, but it's definitely him. He hasn't seen a you know, couple flops. He wants to play. He's, he's disciplined. Today makes a smart choice here in folds. Zhao, I don't see a defend here just because Seidel is so much shorter. Well, I mean, your look eyes, at the distribution. Not your cards. Crazy, but after that, I must be you strong. Deserve. No, you just deserve. <laughs> <laughs> don't be staring at me, big dog. All right? Or else what? Called the big I dog that you were arm. trying to don't see my cards. <laughs> That's what I was. I was saying oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so I can see your eyes still, but not your cards. Perfect. The funniest line, <laughs> boxing or else. What? <laughs> I don't want to have to look away because then I look all away. your physical when tells. You, I look away. Like, okay. <laughs> I would trust you. <laughs> Good atmosphere here at the table. Good, so lots of friendly banter. Uh, Fernando, w what's it been like, you know, playing a whole series like this in the studio? A lot of players and people that I run into talk about how great the atmosphere is, how laid back and casual it is, and how, you know, it's it's sort of like the best environment to play. And how, how did you experience that? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, solo like, poker is a solo sport. You know, like it's it's player versus player, and it's a challenging and rewarding task at the same time and uh, it's definitely a single player however if you play against the same guys over and over like you develop this sort of mutual respect because you know we're all going through the same motions we buy in for tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars break 80 percent of the time in these tournaments and still go after it make decisions for five six figure pots Oof. 
in terms of dollar value. If I look to you, so I, I think the mutual <laughs> respect is definitely here. And uh, there aren't many there aren't many players that play high stakes poker just Nowadays. in general. And and so when you see right people way, every yeah, day that experience the same thing as yourself, it's it's, it's, it's a really special form of connection. Bit three, but <laughs> two more, including this one or this. This one. is one, one of two. Yeah. Also, I need yeah, a you got bugged. couple of hands before we go up to thirty thousand, sixty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hmm? Like that? I was trying oh, to figure out what you were saying. <laughs> what I was saying? Yeah. <laughs> keep trying. I mean, you need to keep singing. I, I couldn't really hear it. That's the problem. Use that big brain of yours. Oh. Remember what I said. Remember what I was saying. I, I, I didn't hear you. It's like it didn't come in, so. <laughs> I guess you don't have that big of a brain then. I guess you're right. Or not that big of ears. My ears are kind of small. 10 seconds. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's under 25,000. <laughs> Ulysses changing gears now. This time, Mickey is in the big blind and goes for the small race. Ja with ace king double suited, sitting on 30 big blinds. Both options are possible call or three bet. But there's the three bet. Now we know Parson is known for his aggression. It might be two out of line, but with Seidel God sitting damn on it, nine William. big blinds. I guess he just folded, so that takes it out of the question. Would you ever consider just going for it here with that kind of, uh, you know, short stack hanging over everyone? And for betting? Yeah. For you? I think it depends on the cards you're holding a lot. Um, there are certainly some non-aces hands he could do this, this with. Like a hand like game. ace, 10, 9, 8. But, and, and also, just to, to make clear, like, Elias definitely has hands he can call with. Uh, that are not paired. Holding the pair really lowers your equity versus aces, which he usually runs into. So hold, if he had a hand like queen, jack, nine, eight, for example, like he, would, he would probably just call and then, and then realize most of his equity by just going to the flop and being able to open jam or check call or check raise and so on. So in some sense, Zhao is certainly kind of lucky that Elis had a pair in his hand because he definitely wants to see a fold over a call when 3-betting ace-king 4-deuce. So now Seidel is in the big blind. And we'll see how aggressive Alex will play this. This hand is good enough to raise. He has the ace. He can just raise and then stack off against Seidel if Seidel wants to continue. Mickey should play really tight given the stacks. So oh, here we go. Seidel is going to go for it. Foxen makes the call, and Foxen let's see hand. what Seidel is working with. And he finds King, King, Jack, 8 in the big blind. You're going to need a hidden ace. Especially okay. against Foxen's yeah. raising range. He's going to be way ahead. Well, I fold the two of them. Both I options are possible. Times. You can call and fade I that ace on the ace. flop and jam. Or you can jam pre. As we can see here, he did jam pre. Hey, just do the short stack. So it makes sense, but he's a 56% favorite, which is not much. But it's a clear cut continue either way. And it's kind of a deja vu from before. Seidel versus Fox in here. You good? Yeah, thanks. These guys are getting really excited. I don't unplug this. sweating the ace. Seems like the players are eager to get out of the building there. Uh, here's the flop. <laughs> Three, jack, six, all hearts. And Seidel flops a king high flush. And that means that Fox is immediately drawing dead here. Great scenario for Seidel, who well, again king. finds a double up. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it doesn't happen often that you're just drawing dead on the flop. <laughs> uh, the players are going to go on a short break, but we will not go on a break through the magic of time travel. We'll chop that break out for you. but. If you, you. want to get yourself a drink or a snack, maybe right now is the time to do so as we will go to the next level, play 30K, 60K with a 60K <coughs> big blind ante. Um, by the way, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe and like the video that we are doing today. We have PLO expert and the man behind PLO mastermind in the booth with us, Fernando Habiger, better known as Jay Nandes. He's here for all your PLO related questions. If you want to try out his software, 
PLOmastermind.com slash poker go. Free to try PLO solver. And I feel like the word solver always makes it sound a little intimidating. I just like to say it's a PLO game where it shows you what to do after you've made your decision, which I think is really fun. So if you want to mess around with that, check it out. PLOmastermind.com slash poker go. And there it is. Players are back in their seats. We've skipped the break. Seidel still the short stack, but now with 14 bigs. Let's see if he can uh, sp uh, spin it up a bit more. So Dueck has a clear cut open at the button. Potting should do the job 210. Decides to go for a limp. This is not an unreasonable choice. Seidel in a bit of a tricky spot. His hand is rainbow. He could raise, flop top pair, and get it in, or just over limp. Both completely fine place. And Elis has a free look to the flop. Three ways with 240,000 in the middle already. Flop is ace, seven, five. So top hair for Seidel and Duek. Duek alongside has a flush, has a, has a gut shot inside straight draw, and Elis has flop bottom pair. So Mickey coming in for the C bet or for the bet on the flop. Side down, all eight. folding. Top pair, top <laughs> kicker. <laughs> to the unexperienced eye, this might look like a tight fold on the flop. However, Mickey is betting into two opponents. Seidel has no backdoor flush draw, has no straight draw, he just has or the ace. Just random four. Just pick four out. Very hard to continue on yeah, turns. Four, sure. do something when he throws the cards at you like that. That's like license to turn some over. How did you make it this far in life? <laughs> oh, what do you mean this far? Like survive? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I find really funny? I find it really funny that... <laughs> The table banter is often interpreted by the chat as people being rude or douchey or whatever. But to me, this is the best part about these final <laughs> tables. These guys know each other so well, they can just take those stabs and, and, and make those remarks, and everybody's laughing. It's all in good fun. You know, Isaac Kempton got some hate in the chat a couple of days ago. I thought he was wildly entertaining. Same for Mickey Dueck okay. and Alex Fox in here today. They're kind of like the odd couple right now, which... Uh, okay. I'm really enjoying. I mean, there's lots of money on the line. These guys still are able to keep it lighthearted. I can only encourage that. For you, Fernando, when you are at a final table or you know you're playing high stakes cash, do you, do you keep it really quiet? You're really focused on your own game, or or do you allow yourself to have a bit of banter going on? Well, outside the final table, these games are much more talkative, generally speaking, and, and I think the reason is pretty obvious. Like, if you're on cam, you are. Whatever you said is forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a quick reminder that we have a free social media giveaway. Go to pokergo.com slash winmasters to enter, and you might win yourself a seat into the 2024 Poker Masters. Also, check out octopipoker.ai if you want to be part of their community as well. Some restrictions do apply. Check it out on pokergo.com slash winmasters. Uh, so, so give us some Thank insight, you. you know, when it's not on camera. Are these guys just going just start nuts, making fun of each other and stuff like that? Can't let you get a read. Oh, yeah. I think the best part about live poker is just the stories that you hear, especially here in Vegas. A lot of stories about crazy things that happened overnight, happened weeks ago. Uh, crazy individuals uh, that... that um, fucking knew it. You just can't talk about on camera <laughs> for the <laughs> obvious reasons. But that's really the best part about live poker is to hear all these stories. And, and, and also, you know, people make fun of each other. They're running jokes and insiders that, that are um, lighting up the mood for sure. And and that is definitely existent with this group of players or just in general with these, with these, with these tournament players. But it, when you're on cam, obviously you can't. <laughs> You win. Talk about it. everything, or you people don't want to, uh, for 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 an obvious Bad reason. Start. Like, there are lo there's a lot of things that they are not necessarily private, but you don't want to put it as public as a live stream at the same time. So, g give <laughs> what's what's the what's the worst thing you've heard this week? Uh, we don't want we don't want to uh, put anyone on the on the spot, but maybe without naming names, any good 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 juicy gossip out there? 
Good stories. Donnie, you had some gossip going on the other day. There's a lot of gossip. I mean, Donnie is the king of gossip, by the way. One of the best things, just to be like hovering around the tables, is like Fernando said, you just hear the stories. Yeah, like you were throwing names and numbers yeah, out there. Yeah, but you can't, you can't, no, you they can't don't, they it, don't leave the circle. I know, the, the, I You know. know what I mean? Or else you're never going to be able to walk near a table ever again. Like on the on the group text this morning, Donnie goes, I heard this one guy lost $40 million. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how? Or I mean, also, it's like some of it you hear and you're like, I have no idea how much of it's true. <laughs> you know, are these numbers exaggerated? Like all, all this sort of stuff, you know? My favorite, my favorite thing, and you know, Donnie and I are in lots of the same group chats. My favorite thing is when someone comes with a story about a poker player that you had forgotten about that even existed. Like a name will come up, like, "Oh, this guy is like on a massive heater in L.A. in some private games." Like, what? That guy still plays poker? No idea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially, I mean, the gambling world and especially Vegas, they just offer the perfect playground for <laughs> some of the most epic stories. A lot, sure. of the, a lot of the stories this week. A lot of these guys, Mickey. Elis are, are good friends. They travel with uh, Sammy Cipolla, um, Jonas Cronwitter. They do a lot of golfing in the morning before these tournaments. They kind of make a whole trip of it. So you hear a lot of golf stories out there, you know, of what happened earlier that day on the golf yeah. course, who lost money to who, all that sort of Ooh. stuff. Oh, this this week, the big the big topic of conversation that could possibly turn into a bet is if Sam Soverell can throw a playing card further than Sean Winter can throw a football. Huh? What? Very that is the... They're, they've been debating well. this wager for like two days. Okay. I saw Sam Soverell throw a card yesterday. It looked fake. It was unreal. Really? I'm on him. Like, like. And I've seen Sean Winter throw a football, and I don't think it's going to go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying Sean Winter is getting coaching from Chris Ferguson? I mean, no, <laughs> Sam Soverell. Uh, so, sorry, Sam Soverell, yeah? I mean, Sam Soverell might have coached Chris Ferguson. He threw this card so good. It looked fake. Do we have carrots here he can chop? That was. I, he could. He could for sure in the big room of the studio go end to end, hundred percent. What? Like really? from from one end to from that big door where you walk in, he could easily hit the other wall. So does he use like special cards? I have no idea. He flung a card. It was unreal. Wow. It looked like a ninja star. I was like, what is happening? That's so crazy. through pre. I mean, some of the stories, some of the Vegas stories are like the, the big bets. Like there's this one story, maybe you guys know this one, but this one player that I play sometimes against, he's kind of a legend in the PLO space as well. He uh, plays the 25K at World Series. And on day two, or was it, the, I think on day one, he gets into an argument with this other player. <laughs> Do you know this story? No, but this is, I, this is just great. He gets into this <laughs> argument with this other player about the other guy says, you're playing too nitty. And he's like, I'm playing too nitty? And he, so this player in question, he just uh, was supposedly playing too nitty. He just cashed in the seniors event <laughs> for like 100K. So he stands up and says, like, I'm going to flip you 100K right now. My ticket here. Next, <laughs> red or black. <laughs> no way. <laughs> the other guy runs to his hotel room at Paris, comes down with four cranberries. <laughs> Just because he didn't want to get he didn't want to get shut down like that. <laughs> oh my god! They just flipped for a hundred thousand the next hand, red or black, in the tournament. Oh my god! <laughs> and the, and the legend wins. The no. seniors guy wins the hundred k for cranberries just during the tournament, just like regular gambling. I mean, gambling, I can guess you know? who the seniors guy was. Am I allowed to guess? Yeah, of course. Billy Baxter. It was not. It was not Billy Baxter. Because oh. didn't he make the senior spell table? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah with Dan Heimiller. It was you know stuff like that. I I heard recently. Somewhat recently, oh, Seidel picks up an uh, aces here on the button. He's not on the button, it's a small button, actually. He can go limp or ace, or just a race. There is a limp. <laughs> Parson is uh, going so He's for getting ready to go to Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, we've, we found out that uh, this sweater costs $1,300, and I think he owns like five of them, different colors. At least three. This is the third color I've seen. He's got red and blue, he's got blue and white, and this one purple and black. They're all from 1300 Thirteen hundred and fifty dollars are from Burberry. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure he went to the Burberry store and said I was like all colors. <laughs> I'm sure there's some superstitious be superstition behind it as well. You know? Well, he when he won event number two, he wore these glasses, these Ray Bans. Then when his friend Sammy Sipola was at the fountain table, he gave the glasses to him. Yeah. And, and then Sammy won again wearing the glasses. Now 
Helios is back. He's got the glasses on again, so it's clearly the glasses. I mean, gambling is a lot more fun <laughs> if you're superstitious, that's for sure. <laughs> Action has been checked here to the turn. It was limped pre from Seidel. Check from Parsonen. Jack 9-8, check, check. Three, Seidel checks Parsonen with the top two. Comes with 100k. Seidel might be in a tricky spot here. He calls. Six on the river. Parson has 19 pairs in his hand. He has the check mark most importantly. Two twenty and a pretty quick fold there from Seidel. Must not be fun to be on the short stack, find aces, and then ultimately have to let them go at the end. But correctly so on the end there. Alex Foxen remaining the chip leader here. Five players left. Event number eight at the PGT PLO series presented by PLO Mastermind. Mickey Duek's been relatively quiet as of late. Comes in with a raise here. 210. 10-6-6-5. Six, six, you started with 2.255. People might forget, but Duek, before he finished third place in the WSP main event that same summer, I think it was the 25K PLO, he came third, I believe, second or third. Big fold. In that one, that was like the big score. Might have been the 10K PLO, I don't remember. It's one, one of the big buying PLOs. Yeah, he came third in the 10K in 2022. There you go. 550K. And then went on to come third in the WSP main event, because why not? So, Fernando, why do you think PLO has been taking off or growing more steadily recently? Like, when I, f when I first started playing poker back in, like, 2007, 8, PLO was already a thing. People were already playing PLO. But you would maybe see, like, one PLO event at a big festival or maybe, like, one sort of a high roller ish 10K buy-in event. But nowadays, there's a whole PLO series, like what we're watching right now. WSOP, the last three years, numbers have skyrocketed. Why do you think now was the time? Well, I, th I think in general, like six. poker players, there's, there's a sort of a popular saying, I'm probably misquoting it, but a professional poker player, like you can invent any game and we're going to start betting on it in <laughs> if there's action. So I think the action just shifted more and more to PLO where recreational players, which are the lifeblood of this industry, they might not enjoy No Limit as much anymore. For, for various reasons. I mean, No Limit Hold'em players are very good, very sharp, very smart. And, and hold boring. <laughs> yeah, and PLO hold seems much more fun. Just being out there, like it just, you, you people are watching this final table, it seems more fun. Well, if you go to a poker room, the Aria Poker Room, for example, the game that has the most fun is the mixed game. And it is because it's not as obvious and brutal who has the edge at any point of the hand or of the game. And that's the environment you want. And that's what PLO does for a lot of players. It is a game where they clearly can see they can win regular pots, even if they screw a hand up, maybe you get lucky. Like it happens a lot more often than in Hold'em. And if you're wrong, you're not that wrong. In Hold'em, when you're wrong, you're really wrong. Like you're just drawing dead basically. And, and, and I think that kind of dictates it. And if you are, um, if you're a cash player, you can see this very clearly, like where is the best action in the room, who has the most fun, where are recreational players gravitating towards. 
and it starts to take slowly over to PLO. The reason it is uh, more of a slower movement, I think, is also because of the price guarantees, because big guarantees attract players, of course. They want to win the big prize, millions of dollars on top. We haven't seen this yet in PLO, but it is getting there closer and closer. And on the other side, you also see PLO players are quite... They're getting more and more organized and liquid, similar to the Hold'em community, where they, they, they have the, the roles or backed enough to just re-enter events more often, which will increase the guarantee, which, it make, which makes it also more attractive for outsiders to come in as well. Uh, so these fields, they grew over the last couple of years for, for these like, several reasons. Before that, before, let's say, two, three years ago, there were no PLO MTT players. It was just mainly cash. But now as the offering right? starts to expand, PLO players become better at PLO tournaments. They play more of them. They re-enter more of them. They're better organized as well. And that sort of grows the industry as well. And then as the price point or the price pools grow, more and more players are interested in joining as well. And I think that's the general direction. I mean, if you look at the summer right now, Arya has nine PLO tournaments running yeah, in-house. Last year's more was than, three. More than Holden. They're going to have five Hold'em and n nine PLO. Yeah, last year during the summer, the Aria was uh, holding three PLO events. Uh, now they moved up to nine, and there are additional, additional ones running, uh, bracelet events running, of course, in the, in the horseshoe. So it's really picking up quite a bit of steam right now. Blind versus blind here. Ace, seven, six, rainbow, fox in up against Dueck. Foxen bets 90,000 here on the flop. Dueck makes the call. Nine of spades on the turn. Pretty good card here for Mickey Dueck after he calls that flop. Obviously pairs the nine. Spades come in for him as well, giving him a flush draw. Yeah, Foxen doesn't have that much to work with. The way you want to think about PLO, like bluffing, is you have obviously your draws and they can get there. If you don't have a draw, you want to block the hands that are really good. In this case, an 8 is a key blocker, blocking 5-8, blocking 10-8. A 5 is a key blocker, you're blocking 5-8. Um, spades will help. Uh, Foxen has not much to work with, so check folding here is the play. And Mickey feels like Mickey... I think Mickey is thinking right now, this table is pretty passive so far. It's time for someone to just pick up this table captain image, and, uh, and that's what he's doing. He's been raising wide, wide ranges, floating the flop right here against Foxen. He's, he's ready to play. You can also just tell based on body language and whatnot. Like he's he's starting to to think that he should probably change his sort of more ca uh, more um, careful approach from the beginning into taking more of a dominant position right now. He does have Eric behind him and uh, and obviously Elis, but oftentimes when he raises, Elis is in the blind, so he's out of position. So it does it does offer some opportunity to go for steals and open wider overall. And Foxen hasn't been raising just like non-stop many hands. And I think that starts to sort of sink in and become obvious to the other players and uh, leads them to have some opportunity to also pick up some aggression. Yeah, and the stack sizes are far closer together than they were at the start of the table. Foxen on top at 46 bigs. Then 43-41, the top three very close. Samao on 26 and Seidel, the short stack currently with 14 big blinds. But even 14 bigs, that is not a stack that will come over the top for the whole bit, like, all the time. So that gives Duek, you know, a bit more wiggle room as well. It's almost as though the players kind of came into it, Foxen being the big chip leader to start, expecting him to be that table captain, also probably partly because of his reputation. Every time you see Foxen with a big stack, he's just blasting. <coughs> and now that the players are settled in, to your point, Fernando, Mickey Duek's like, well, he's not doing it. I'm going to do it. Like, exactly. you know, if he's if he's just going to basically be a little bit more conservative, then that's going to open the door for me. So I'm going to I'm going to step right through it. If you're just tuning in, we have uh, Jane Andes on the call with us today. He is the 
brains behind PLO Mastermind is our presenting sponsor of this series. Check out plomastermind.com slash pokergo. Make a free account and start using their solver for free. So if you want to just tap, like, I don't know, dip your toe in the PLO waters, this is a great starting point, and he is here also to answer your questions in the chat. So far, seeing lots of our regulars in the chat. We've been so busy going back and forth learning from Fernando that we haven't even had a chance really to dive into the chat, but please let us know if you have any questions. Um, some people saying that they're disappointed that Short Deck never became the mainstream. I feel like Short Deck and even Open Face Chinese had I'm a bit sure of a those. run for a few years and have sort of died off. Uh, I do feel like PLO is very different. I feel like I feel like PLO is here to stay. Wait a second. Uh, People hyped up Short Deck too much. Three, three point five that was uh, the problem. Three point five as soon as Short Deck started, everyone was like, game of the future. And it's, it's not. It's no longer the future. Tony, can I remind you <laughs> of a stream we did on, in, in the PokerGo studio that nowadays seems impossible? What's that? We did a Short Deck PLO cash game. Jeez. Well, that sounds spicy. You? <laughs> like, like, how is that even a thing? <laughs> I don't know. It sounds great, though. Probably Ben Lamb's idea. Behind. Two point four behind. <laughs> so the word on the street is Get like right short out. deck was just like too 15. easy to solve. Figure it out. Oh, because You're my math guy. I mean, mathematically or combinatorically speaking, it has so few combos that if you actually have a machine, aka a solver, you can just solve this game in no time, and that means you kind of learn how to play really well, really fast. PLO is is much more difficult to solve than Hold'em because. What people sometimes don't know is in Hold'em, you have you have those uh, 1,326 combos from seven of spades, two of spades, seven of diamonds, two of diamonds. So if you, com if you count all the combos, you have 1,300 combos right about. In PLO, you have 270,000 combos. <laughs> so you, you only add two cards, right, and it four. feels like show maybe four. it doubles the, the amount, four. Yeah, but yeah. it doesn't. It multiplies, and you have 270,000 combos. Great. And that makes it so much harder to solve the game, because how do you remember this many combos? You just <laughs> can't Those are your cards. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think three of them. Are. The element of tournament I think all of them. adds I think another all of them. layer of complexity that makes Those it even more difficult to really know what is the best play. And that's cool because it means well because uncertainty in how the game is played best keeps the game alive. Well, the one thing also that you can just do. When PLO starts to fizzle Even out, we'll back. you're like, wait, 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 I have an idea. How about we do Thanks five cards? Awesome. And then a <laughs> well, couple he, years he later... He was talking about six card yeah, PLO earlier. A couple right? years later, six <laughs> cards. Like, you know? Just keep I adding know, cards. Why not? Poker players, <laughs> they just need something to gamble on. And then five cards. I mean, five cards, you have over two and a half million combos. Oh, my God. So you go from 270 to two and a half million. And in six cards, you have 20 million combos. So... Yeah. yeah, I mean, eventually it. computing power will be strong enough that to to solve all this kind like of this stuff. This opening on my cutoff. The problem is not the computing power; doing. it is that the human mind cannot memorize two hundred thousand combos. But w you could memorize a grid thirteen by thirteen in oh. Hold'em, where you have Ace King on top, and, t and then you have seven or pocket deuces in the bottom. Like you can memorize this sort of grid and the shape of it. But in <sighs> Pillow, that doesn't exist. So it's much harder to figure out the game for a human. Oh so right God. now, Fernando is going to name all combos of hands <laughs> that are possible in six-card PLO. We'll see you guys in a few hours. Sounds like a Mr. Beast challenge. <laughs> yeah, name does, all yeah. the combos. It does. Every combo that you name, you get $1,000. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. If you are also in the mood for some No Limit Hold'em, check out the most iconic cash game show ever to be created. High Stakes Poker, we got a new season airing right now. We use promo code hsp 12 half to save $30 on the first year of an annual subscription. We're in the middle of the new season, so new episodes coming out weekly. And we are already working on a new season that we're taping in May, which will get released right after WSOP. So the high-stakes poker train is not stopping. It is it has definitely left the station. And that $30 discount is our biggest discount of the year. So you might as well jump on it now because that's also going to be helpful with uh, a little bit of foresight towards the WSOP. Yeah. Fernando, a question for you. It, with, with six months of lead time, you put a million-dollar PLO tournament on the calendar. How many players do you think it would get? Another one? Probably like 
it you depends on the lineup that is guaranteed or not. Right. Because poker players will find money. You remember? That's not the problem. It doesn't rely on the players. Right. These guys will scrounge up the money. You got you got to get some if you announce whales in there. If you announce 10 recreational players are signed up in the in the first press release, that's going to attract everyone. The second walk. 100%. It's just liquidity. I mean, it's like a Wasn't the third? Startup company basically. You just you have to tell your investors something. And if the story is good enough, they will will, will will play. And I'm sure if you put together the yeah, biggest pillow event of all time, people want to be named switching, as right? participants in it. So they will find the money in some ways if the lineup yeah, is good enough for sure. Like so uh, I mean, comments, if you yeah. guarantee five You'll recreational be players, be the I think you see yeah. like between 30 and 50 entries for sure. If you guarantee like 10 or 15, you see the 100 entries could be Wow, for sure. That's why I'm a, a little bit surprised that we don't see a bigger buy-in PLO event on the WSOP schedule. Like, the biggest buy-in is 50k. Not that the World Series of Poker will ever announce players that are going to play. You likely don't even know. But what we know about the World Series of Poker is so many recreationals hold that brand, that series, so high as, like, their bucket list item. So even if you just announce, let's say, 250k PLO, you're going to get... 10 recreationals that are just like, yeah, I'm rich. I love PLO. Let's go. And then in turn, you're going to attract all those sharks. So that's why I think that, you know, we had the, the 100K PLO Super High Roller Bowl, and it was very well attended. But if the WSOP was ever to do one, they would blow us out of the water. And I'm just kind of thinking that combination with the fact that PLO is so popular right now that, you know, this is the time to pounce on that sort of thing. That's a good point. Yeah. The, it's all about the narrative. Like, what's the narrative that you tell your your friends if, in case you win or run deep in a tournament? Yeah. An interesting spot here. Ja with the limp, the jack high rundown, and a gap. Fox and over limps, and Duek huh? has kings. So this is kind of a nightmare for Ja because of the stack sizes once again. Sure, you can see a flop. Um, he has two and a half times the chips of Seidel roundabout. If he busts here, it's not good. So people might say, well, but what? just see a flop, you know, see what happens. In PLO, you will flop. You're not just going to flop a straight all the time. You're going to flop a pair and a draw. Your opponent pots. You have to get it in. And you have 55% equity. This is happening way more often than you just you flopping your opponent dead and you're just going to rip it in. That's and really the issue. And he kind of set himself up to play the hand that way, opting to limp on the button here. If he comes in with a raise, he gets three bet. Then you're forced to, if you do want to call, you're forced to just play more. Does fold. Yeah, the idea of limping and folding versus a raise is very anticlimactic for people. Like, they don't, they, they think it's just wrong. But it, it really five, isn't. Two point those are two separate situations. The first mm -hmm. situation is you get a price to maybe see the flop. You limp. And then you get raised. Now the situation has changed. Someone has announced they have a different range. They have a strong range now. The price is different. So the circumstances have changed. And you can and are allowed to make adjustments based on that. We do see Fox and actually going for the limp call. They play deeper stacks. And they are way less likely to do bust in, the, in this hand. His hand is quite reasonable, but in this case, he, he didn't flop anything at all. And Duek has an interesting decision. He has a middle pair and an over pair. Should he bet and just take this down here or check check back and try to realize equity? He does check back. King of hearts on the turn gives Duek top set here. Only heart in either player's hand is that nine of hearts for Duek. Fox and checks. There is 600,000 out there. So even though a flush is present, there are a lot of straight draws out there that can either call or fold. And uh, Mickey would benefit from either. Pretty small bet. So if Fox had had a hand like a queen jack, he might actually call. <laughs> Duek does not show, <coughs> but did shoot Fox in a look. Don't look now, but Mickey Duek is now the chip leader 
in the tournament. First time of this final table that we've seen Foxen drop out of the top spot. <laughs> Sounds like Jared Blessing. Do do King Queen seven five? He's peeking his head in the door. Oh, I think they just oh, saw that. the hand on stream where yeah. Elis considered to call King Queen seven five. Apparently, it's very Jared poked, poked his head in to make but fun wouldn't of that make him want Eels. Want to take your action? Hmm? Wouldn't that make him want your action? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm confused by that. Oh, a little yeah. spade, like maybe a two or three Very spades. small card, the bottom card. The bottom one, yeah. Sounds like one card may have flashed. Action here over two fox and on the button. You Eight, like seven, three, no? five, five. Two, nine. Not a good spot to open, to be honest, because Eric has shown the propensity to just three bet jam a lot of high cards, and if you have eight seven five five, it's not great. So Foxen goes for the limp. I like that a lot more than if he were to raise, and do it goes for the call. Makes sense. He, he gets an enormous price. Eric has a hand that is premium considering the stack size and the action in front. Time to raise. There it is. He announces the pot. And once again, we see a limp, followed by a race. And I think it's completely reasonable for Foxen to just fold now. He's most uh, very often up against a pair, and it's hard to outdraw a pair with 8755. So folding is fine. Calling is okay as well. Fold, can you run it out? He, do <laughs> he does fold. Duek also oh, folds. Yeah, Duek yeah, yeah. wants to see the flop. Yeah. He's on a heat check. He wants to see how hot is running right fold. now. I'm going to bink the turn, though. <laughs> I had two pair. <laughs> I'm the best folder in the world. Eric would have made the nuts with <laughs> the ace five of diamonds. Mm -hmm. We should run the board out every time. Yeah, we should. Just bring back the rabbit cam. <laughs> Like don't I, show they it. do. They do need to bring back the whole card peak yeah. cam. Yes, that is the can that it's like you go over to someone, they're thinking, and then they just slowly. P oh, aces! My favorite. Oh my, my god! My Ten favorite aces. is if you if you think back at the Oliver Hudson hand versus Sammy Farha. One of the cool things about that hand is the fact that when Oliver Hudson looks at his cards, <coughs> you can see Sammy Farha across the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, yep. From that angle, like it just looks so cool. Yeah, we got to bring that back. Is that the Ace Ten? Ace Ten versus Aces. First hand main event. First hand main event, yeah. Oh five? Yeah, I mean, it was a while ago. Roughly? We're old. Wild, what, what, wild what, hand. What actually got you into poker? Like what was it like watching on TV or maybe online? Like what was the thing that, that first got you in the game? I think I got into the whole like boom in two thousand five. Just like playing at school, but then I just figured like I actually wanna get better at the game, you can get better. So like reading books, you know, Harrington on Hold'em watching on TV, Moneymaker went out, I mean, that was 2003, 2005, like, re-watching. I guess I got in, like, 2005. Uh, but pretty much that, like, poker on TV, it was everywhere, playing online, playing in school. So it was even on TV in Switzerland? Oh, where you yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in 2005, but, like, shortly yeah, after. Right. Like, different night TV all. night shows would have, like, home game, much? poker. Okay. Does it matter? And, uh, yeah. We should kind be able of like to figure it out. I mean, at this all, point, everyone in the school was in poker. Well, now right? you just turn them all over. It's just like most people I mean, quit at some point. So you get to see Ellis's hand. When <laughs> did the transition to PLO happen? So in 2010. I, I was looking for my, for my four cards. I didn't even see his. I honestly. played on a. How was that possible? Like, obviously, it was in my view, but like I'm not poker. paying attention to the other card. I'm just looking for my. It was great. And I played 2 4 Hold'em Rush. Okay. Eight-handed eight hold him cash. And uh, the rules of the game were you flop a set, you, you double. <laughs> and, uh, you flop it was just a rule. <laughs> yeah. You, you flop double, a set, you're just guaranteed to double. If you have top pair, don't get stacked. <laughs> That's basically the rule of the game.
And I did really well in that game, but then Fult hit closed, and I had to move to Stars, and I realized that 6 max and 8 max aren't the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and stars How much did it cost you to learn, to uh, learn that? <laughs> good amount back then. Yeah. So I went broke Very kind crazy. of on Stars, and then Very I started crazy. rebuilding. And in the whole process of rebuilding, I was like, I don't, I'm too late for Hold'em to like really learn it. But why not just start PLO where no one knows anything? So in 2010, I invested a lot of money in terms of my role to just like buy the latest materials and books and coaching. And it felt like really early for this new game. And then one year later, 2011, I, I just went full time and I only played PLO like mostly since then. Will you play any Hold'em oh. now? Like, will you play the WSB main events? Like, I haven't played it so far, but I, 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 I might, I might really play don't it. Really, don't want anyone to see this. <laughs> I think Hold'em. I mean, I think all the games are good. Like, I enjoy a wide range of different games. Yeah. But just for different reasons. Like, PLO is more. If you, if you're much more studied in one game than the other, the experience of playing the other game is much different. Like, it's in many ways more fun. Fine, because you're sort of free, oh, but yeah, obviously if everyone is really good, it's kind of like less fun in some ways. You're gonna make so it up to me in the poker game. If it comes down to a home game, I would rather play a wide range of games versus yeah. just one game, yeah. where I don't care about the edge that much, which is okay. for fun. No, of course that makes total sense. And hold them will, and also like mm, I want to say oh this no. about hold them because I don't want to make it sound like it's all figured out. The re the idea that the game is figured out lowers yep. the traffic but obviously if you look at live games they introduce a squid game they introduce a stand-up game right like those are really good catalysts to revive the game because there are no solutions out there how do you play the squid game optimally how do you play the stand-up game optimally? So you introduce new metas and in, side games or bounty tournaments progressive bounties and so on that are much harder to figure out and that's really healthy for the ecosystem Duick here, making it 210, and Parson comes over the top, making it pot. Doesn't even have a suited ace. Maybe just picking on, picking up on the fact that Duick has been very active. There's only one table cap, <laughs> and uh, Eli's asking the question right now. <laughs> and Duick, he doesn't necessarily have a fold. If he really wants to win this tournament now, then he can definitely make this call. Making this call is sort of a either you are going to win this tournament or I'm going to win this tournament kind of move. Folding is fine too. Right. Is, is this quintessential PLO tournament play? In a cash game, you would never see this. So some examples. The fact that he doesn't have the ace as suited makes it actually a better 3 bit than a call <laughs> because you weigh the alternatives. Seems Calling with a suited Seems ace Seems that way. is fine because you have a suited and not a draw. You don't mind if the big man comes <laughs> along. You can dominate. Leveraging the ace as a 3 bit bluff when the ace is unsuited makes more sense the because you don't want to see a flop and you also don't want to go multi-way anyway. Does it have aces every hand? And it, it, this idea Second tends to work better in tournaments yeah. because in cash games, if you three bet, people don't fold. <laughs> they, just, they just don't. <laughs> but in, in, ca in tournaments, people do fold because they're short and there's ICM and they have to fold. And that's how I most mean, people also like understand the game, shit. as we can see here, do it with the fold. In a cash game, I wouldn't try this, uh, the ace, queen, 10, 7, okay. because you're just going to get called and you don't so have a great hand. So you want to play more... You want to play more linear, which means more just like play the top hands as a three bet and then and then don't three bet trash. But in, in tournaments, it's different. What you're saying is that people will automatically Maybe assume two, seven? you have a monster seven, when you three eight. bet. So why not three bet a whole bunch more? Who do I have? In tournaments? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's seemingly every time we, we analyze a hand, it, it boils down to, well, if he's three betting, the likelihood of him having aces is very high. It's not about that he has aces or a monster. It's more that whatever you have, is never like you're so there is something called confrontation um chance what is the chances you're going to get stacked in the hand and if you call a three bet and you go to the flop at an sbr of one with for example duex hand the nine six five four double before the likelihood of confrontation the likelihood that you that all the money goes in is very high and that and you, you and and uh, assuming most like m assuming that you have like let's say 50% equity when the money goes in it's not a good spot in a tournament 
to, to get it in 50% equity. So he's avoiding the uh, confrontation potential by just folding prey. Not necessarily because he thinks his opponent has aces, it's more that he's gonna get he's gonna get all the money in and get busted out of the tournament at a high frequency, which is bad considering Sidel's stack. So if this would be a cash game, the reason you call is not because um, you think your opponent is lighter, it is more because you don't mind getting all the money in as a flip here and there because uh, you can just rebuy. There's no ICM to consider. It's kind of a chicken's game in some ways. The guy that puts in the last bet has an inherent advantage because he can still get the other guy to fold. If, you, if you're the guy that's just calling, no one's gonna can fold, and that's a big problem. Fox in here, betting 110 on the flop, betting 320 on the turn, applying that pressure on Mickey Duek. Duek with the open ended straight draw. Also has now a, a gut shot added on the turn. Oh. And decides to let this go. This will Good flip flop. One. Chip leads. Very, very tight race right now. This one hand drops Duek from chip leader to third place. Top three very close together. Seidel still the short stack, so a lot of players still playing with that in mind. You know, there's a pay jump looming here if Seidel ends up busting out. Those are the big ones. Hmm? Those are the big ones. I had an interesting decision on the turn. Me too. Yeah, the big Could be 320. Huh? Could go 320. Could go 360. <laughs> here, here comes the one-liner. Nope. I think Mickey Duak has uh, professed many times, especially during his main event run, that Sounds like PLO cash is his forte, his main focus. You cross paths with Mickey a lot in, in Vegas? I could. I mean, he doesn't play the Aria game like that often. He probably plays some private games, I would assume. Uh, but he's definitely a six back, right? Deep stack cash game player, I would say. That's how oh, it's Cool. Do you do you notice yourself having to actively make adjustments when you jump into tournaments because you just play so much more cash based on availability? Yeah, I mean there are there are a lot of adjustments to be made. If you play 30 big blind PLO, it's just very, very different to uh, pre and post flop to to normal cash games. So yeah, there, there, there are definitely some adjustments, but also just the general, the whole atmosphere is very different to cash games. Oh, I finally got Tournaments, one every chip kind of matters, <laughs> especially when you get laid. I thought that not was going to be. <laughs> I started with a king, so I <laughs> And also in tournaments, you can't hide. Well, it might be an you can't quit yeah. unless you bust. Right. So the dynamic is quite different. If you lose a big hand, you have to, you just have to play the stack you're left with. In a cash game, you can just rebuy and play the stack you're comfortable with. You have a chance to win back as much as you lost. In a tournament, it just is what it is and everyone deals differently with it. So the dynamic of the table is different. Some guy might just had a huge Turn chip lead, and then two mm -hmm. hands later, he's the short stack. He can't hide, he can't quit, he can't take a break. Like, those kind of factors are non-present in, in cash games, but they play a huge role in tournaments. Yep. Same. I'm going to put a poll in the chat and ask what people will like better, cash games or tournaments, because I feel like people have a very distinct preference. I'm a, I'm a tournament guy. I, I, I like to approach my day or my night or, you know, my weekend as, like, a series of competitions where I'm fighting with these people and, you know, the up and down of the, of the, of the stacks and the payouts and, and, and all that stuff is really intriguing to me. To me, a cash game always feels like, ah, whatever, doesn't matter. I'll re-entry, I'll re-buy, I'll maybe grab some lunch, we'll go back to the table. Like, there seems like to be no urgency, which to me removes part of the fun element of the game. Um, you you, t you come across to me as more like a purist of, th of the game. 
which probably suits a uh, cash game style better. I like competition overall. I, I, I mean, I like the competition with myself. And it can be found in both. Like, competing with others is only in tournaments, really. In cash game, what's interesting is that it's cash that is visible in front of you. Right. So you 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 have uh, there are there are, there's like I talked to a friend recently, for example. He said I asked him, "Do you sometimes just play cash tight until you win a couple of pots just to make the money, and then that's it?" It's like, yeah, I, I do this quite often. Like you, if I bring out the yellows, you know I have it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I mean, he's a no limit player. We don't play together or something. But he's just generally saying, if I bring out the yellows, I have it. And you can't do that in tournaments. Right. You have to fight. Yeah. Because otherwise you're dead. And I, th I, I like that kind of aspect. And you also can't quit a table. Once you sign up, you're in it. And if the table is too tough or too hard or you just don't feel it right now, it doesn't matter. Like you just have to play. And, and I like that say, aspect. Uh, can I have a table change? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over there. <laughs> Not in the tournament. <laughs> well, I just, uh, actually, uh, one guy yesterday at a table. He got a table change? Well, <laughs> I don't want to name the name because I'm not sure if this is a public story. But this guy said he played a very, very, very high stakes tournament overseas somewhere else. And this was many years ago. Uh, I don't want to name the exact amount because maybe it's like not cool or whatever. But anyway, he got sat down, and then the, and he's and the VIP spoke yeah. in a different language. And as soon as he sat down, about three one minutes later, after the VIP talked three? to the tournament manager, he had to switch the seat, <laughs> <laughs> and he was out of position against the VIP. That's great. But the guy said it didn't matter in this tournament because uh, it was just it was just really good action. Yeah. But yeah, usually you can't choose your seat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do when I get to the South Point, you know, for my $120 nightly tournament. I want to get the seat change. It is, it is funny, like, we put the poll in the chat, and it's, you know, 57% to 43%. You know, people really have their preference in that way. Donnie, you're also a tournament guy. Yeah, I used to play only cash, like, in Vegas. Like, no limit cash, one, two, two, five, et cetera. Um, kind of didn't play a lot for a little while but now I have I have the competitive bug like I I want to like my biggest driver right now is like I want to like win like a big kind of meaningful tournament like I just want that and I like the competition of it like Fernando said you you show up you literally can't just like sit there you have to fight the blinds are going to go up people are going to attack you like you have to sit there and you have to fight and sometimes that might be fighting with no cards you just have to kind of take a stand and whatnot but I, I like that aspect of things I also like the fact that it's a little bit more dynamic in tournaments. Again, changing blinds, the field conversion, uh, converging, etc. Turn or cash games a little bit more static t to some degree, so can find that a little bit more boring. The best thing for me about cash is like the ability to just be able to come and go. Like back when I was playing cash all the time, it was great. Like you said, you can be like, "Oh, you're here. Let's go get lunch. I'll just you know I'll go back later." Like not a big deal. You can't do that in a tournament. You go play a tournament, you might be locked in for 10 to 12 hours. Right. 475. Fox and finds the bluff. It's air on air action. This is what we like to see. The power of the mines. Notice Samal has not gone anywhere yet. How much in the middle? question <laughs> and, and I love how the dealer just has the answer immediately 780 in the middle plus of course the bet Foxen just made keep that in mind Samal can easily stuff it in here if he decides to do so but of course as we can see on the screen despite the fact that the the, the percentages favor him he doesn't have anything going on here there's the aggression from Mr. Foxen. The one-handed one Mr. Foxen. Yeah, that's right. Uh, by the way, Oresto in the chat makes a great argument. He says, you can't win trophies playing cash. There you go. That's true. That, that, that's that sort of settles true. it. Uh, Sultan Kair says, Jaynanda's sight and work for PLO is world class. Well, there you go. Appreciate that. How, uh, how is it juggling? the business and then playing all the time is it difficult or so are you in a nice groove where you can kind of do both how is that whole thing playing yeah. out queens 
Yeah. It's a, well, it's a definitely a learning process uh, throughout, throughout the years. Game. Yeah. In general, I think, I think most people, myself included, we don't like doing many things. Like if you do many things, it really takes away from the quality of each, each I only one guess of them that in some ways. So in the first couple that. of years, I mean, in the PLO Mastermind, for example, I produced all the videos. Like so I made five videos a week for like almost two years, which is too much work in general, <laughs> but <laughs> also the reason just takes you away from yeah, the game. Nowadays, my main concern is just to be a poker player and then share whatever I think is valuable with uh, with the audience. Um, so I'm not really trying to juggle too much and I have a pretty big team of people that do all the business stuff. I don't do any operations. I don't do any software development over obviously or management as well. As long as I can stay in uh, the mindset of a poker player, we do better as a company and I also just enjoy my time a lot better. So I'm, I'm mainly trying to just play poker and think about poker as much as I can. 8-5-3 here, all spades. Fox and flops the flush. Could get that straight flush that Remco's looking for, depending on what comes in. One time, Donnie, one time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Simao does have some outs. He has a five and a three, so two pair. This, this is blind on blind. Simao limped from the small blind Fox and checked the big blind. Somehow checking again on this flop to Fox and The meta here is Foxen looks like he is the guy that uh, drives the aggression to generally under the table, especially against shorter stacks. And I think that that will shine through Simao, and he thinks, okay, I'm, this this guy is trying to bully me around here, so I'm definitely going to stick along with two pair, see how this develops. And I, I think Foxen's image could play off uh, or pay off here. In in different ways like maybe Simao even calls down or calls multiple streets of two pair and doesn't believe Fox to have a clutch does check call 80,009 here on the turn wrong suit right Remco yeah I'm very pissed <laughs> <laughs> does the king of spades we always talk about ace of spades blocker and PLO does the king of spades also work for that or or is, is this like a thing of absolutes where it's either ace or nothing as far as the blocker goes it's very contextual in some situations the king of spades is a better more relevant blocker than the ace of spades depends a bit how, how the ranges are constructed like in this case we have a limp and a check the ranges are extremely wide and foxing can have straights two pairs flushes he can have a lot of a wide range of hands if he has a flush, he's more likely to have a lower flush than a higher flush anyway. So the king of spades, not too, too relevant. Even the ace of spades would be not very relevant here. 125 from Samao. Quick call. Samao goes for the block. It's hard to imagine to me that Foxen would call with worse, even though it is a small bet. And he does have a flush this time and makes a snap call. And every chip matters here. I mean, Simao now down to a bit more than 10 big blinds. Seidel is uh, holding steady at 600,000. So these stacks are getting closer and closer now. I feel like Eric Seidel is hiding under the covers. I was just going to say. Pretending like he's not here. I kind yeah. of forgot that he was at the <laughs> table. I mean, <laughs> yeah. He hasn't done too much recently. He's just, he's just chilling over. This is why I said earlier, I think he can get two or three more pay gems because... No one's going to even realize he's there, and then he's just going to be in final three-handed with four big blinds. Yeah, it's like the Jim Colby <laughs> strategy. Let, it, let, it, let, let someone else take out everyone else, and you just show up for the heads-up portion of the tournament. Uh, we are being treated, though, to a really fun final table. Lots of dynamics that are still yet to be figured out. Uh, Elis Parsonen is just waiting for his chance to start running over the table, and maybe this is the start of that. Uh, Fox, in meanwhile, the last orbit or so has added about a million chips. He now is well out in front again. Parsons in there. Raised to 280. If you're just joining us on YouTube, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow is the epic conclusion of this series.
25k championship like events. like 2.3, right? Action now on Foxen in the small blind. Looks interested. Foxen calls. He's got the king, queen, ten, and then a mystery card. Pretty standard so far. Mickey should also make this call. He could squeeze. He does have aces blockers. Wow, this is very aggressive. And Foxen's other card is a ten, so he's got king, queen, ten, ten. Elis out of the way. The fact I almost feel like Mickey is like looking for an excuse to squeeze. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I have an ace. Okay, cool. Let's go. Foxen gives it up. <laughs> Look at the <laughs> facial expression there by Foxen. A little bit of an eye roll. Duick now up over three million. Still, still trailing Foxen, but it's like it's like those two are kind of running away with things. And <coughs> Elis is kind of in this weird middle ground where he like can't really do much. I mean, it, if he has to play a pot against Foxen or Duak, it could be bad news for him, of course, with Seidel being very short, Samao also pretty short. So we're likely going to just see Elis here just kind of sit on the sidelines and hate his life for a little while <laughs> until <laughs> until things kind of shake out a little bit further. Definitely handcuffed with the situation, for sure. I feel like if like anyone Mickey. hates to be handcuffed, it's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he wants to be in there. He wants to be playing. For sure. <laughs> he can't wait to double through. It seems like Foxen and Mickey, they are they are trying to dominate this table at the moment, and they are sort of passing it back and forth. Uh, Seidel is just <laughs> patiently waiting. Hopefully Simao busts out. Simao is involved in hands. He could bust. Yeah, he has he has been playing a bit of hands. Seidel seems very content to just kind of let other know? people possibly explode. Three point. Yeah. I feel like between Foxen, Duek, and Parsonen, it's like fighting fire with fire. Those three. And Samao and Seidel are, are now just trying to do a, a tightrope dance to see if they can ladder up a spot. And Seidel here finds King, Queen, Jack, 10 in the big line. And he says, <laughs> I'm going to gamble. You certainly can't fold. Um, again, you can call and just jam the flop or go all in pre. Black cards. Black or low. What is Foxen's fold card? Ooh. I was gonna say, it feels like it's generally kind of wide. Even I don't care what his other card is, you know. <laughs> Unless it's the ace of spades, yeah. then it's, it, it would have been okay. This is certainly is like what we call the double summon up in the same turn. <laughs> this is PLO players call this doubles to the trash, but you get forty-six percent. Can't be that bad. All right, here comes the flop. Let's see if Sidel can survive. Queen Jack Five, definitely a good starting point for him. He has bluff top two pair and then open in straight draw. Foxen needs a five backdoor spades or backdoor clubs. Ten of spades. The action card. Three of spades. Well, no. Turn card. The eight of spades. Okay, Foxen now with 11 outs to bust Seidel. Or I guess to double him up for the oh, yeah, third time at this final table. Ten five spades. Seidel, 72%. To so double up kind of again. Ah. And five or spade. It's not too bad. Seidel, as always, calmly awaiting his fate. River card is the deuce of hearts. And Seidel finds himself another double up. Most players are chip leader after three double ups, but Seidel has had some, <laughs> had some bumps in the road. I mean, Samao probably hating his life right now. <laughs> Very much. Samao has a tough spot. I mean, he's raising into Fox and, and Mickey. They don't like folding. Three now? It's, it's, it's Three not an easy spot five. to be in.
obviously Elis also doesn't like the development uh, yeah. here. He's still handcuffed in the middle field in terms of the stack sizes. <coughs> Fox and Mickey. My turn. Right. I tried. I tried. It's my I hope it's not my time to W up. Huh? I said I hope it's not my time to do it. Uh, <laughs> doing too much doubling up. to the smaller sizing, 200,000 now from the cutoff, the ace blocker. He is getting a really good price, 120 more, 400,000 in the middle already. Yeah. Fox and know something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this flop connects very well with his holding. We see deuce, four, five, two diamonds. So in PLO, you don't slow play well. that often in position, but sometimes you just smash the board so <laughs> much. So this is a good example. So he has two pairs straight draw and then a flush draw. This is a decent spot to check back. And that's because if you connect so well, your opponent has so few chances to also connect well. Yes, you have more information than in, in Hold'em. You have two additional cards, and they do remove possibilities for your opponent. Foxen wins a small one, but not insignificant. Blinds, by the way, 40k, 80k, with the 80k big blind ante, so stakes do continue to climb. Yeah, Foxen just reclaimed the chip lead after this hand. Maybe that was the reason to raise. <coughs> A little update from the main field. Currently 50 entries in the 25k PLO Championship event. Sam Soverl on top. Other big names with chips. Sean Winter, Jason Kuhn, Nick Schulman. If you want to follow along, go to pgt.com and follow the live reporting. That final table streaming tomorrow. Careful, you feel. Me? Yes. You see this? You see it? I saw one card. I'm not like certain what it is, but. That's where the mind game starts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying, "Don't three bet me." I saw, I saw, I saw a card. I guess I should have waited till after the hand to say that. <laughs> I'm sure Duke has something funny to say right now, or at, at the very least, something clever. Well, also, should should he possibly say what he thought he saw? Yeah, I think that's sort of how it works. He's, he said he thought he saw a card, even though he's not. Thought I saw like a black five. No. <laughs> 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 he had the seven of hearts, which was his lowest card. Yeah. <laughs> now you're going to tell me you have four red cards. No, I, I <laughs> Here's a look at the Las Vegas skyline to remind you of PLO a Mastermind. Learn to win a PLO for free. Go to plomastermind.com slash poker go. If you have questions about the product, you can ask the man on the screen himself, he's in the booth with us, Jane Andis, Fernando Habegger, the brains behind PLO Mastermind. Of course, they have a fantastic team working on their product, which not only includes coaching videos, but also a solver, which basically assists you in deciding whether you're making the right decisions. It starts with pre-flop, of course, flop, turn, river, whatever you want to work on, they have it available. So check it out for free. Sign up right now, plomastermind.com slash pokergo. 
And just to clarify this, because there are going to be some people in the chat there, they're going to be like, what? A solver? So <laughs> we <laughs> we don't offer a solver. We use a solver, but we have a sim Wait. library. So if you use the product, you don't need to run any sims, because that's what we did. And that's the exact pain point that we, uh, well, that we solve, which solve for, which is if you're a poker player, you want to run sims, you need hardware, you need time, money, knowledge. Yeah in order to do that and Send with pilot trainer you don't because it's a trainer that yeah. already has pre-ran simulations that you can just use and play with so you don't need to run any sims because that's one of the hardest parts of uh, getting to good information is to run the sims yourselves and configure and set them up uh, so no need of any you don't need to know anything about running a sim or how to set up a solver uh, it's just a training software that you can play with Right, so it's a trainer. It's a poker trainer. Yep. Let's be clear about that. People are usually intimidated by the, the word solver. Huh? Yeah. Sometimes rightfully, like running your own sims is not an easy task. Yeah, if you want to intimidate your friends, you just tell them, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm solving. I'm just I'm doing solving. a bunch of solvers. <laughs> <laughs> but really, you just let PLO Mastermind do it for you. <coughs> yeah, that's that's also one of the, m the main motivations uh, behind developing software is that the costs of running hundreds of thousands of sims are so high that if you would just do it for yourself you just couldn't justify it it doesn't make any sense it's just too expensive but if you can create a product out of it you can create cash flow that finance running the sims and creating the software developing and hiring hiring developers and creating custom software uh, it starts to make economical sense to run these sims but if you're just a poker player by yourself and running your own sims, it's it's a real hassle for sure. Yeah, or just get Fernando's phone number and he'll just tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> the answer is fold. <laughs> <laughs> Tight is right. Still applies after all these years. Samao is not going to be happy with his current placement at the table. Button raising for him into the two aggressive big stacks is uh, not a, a good situation for him. But there's a there's a clear amount of separation between him and Seidel right now that Seidel is basically playing the tournament. Samao is basically hoping for a spot to double up. Duek has a big hand here. Oh. Ace, Jack, 9, 7, double. Goes for the raise versus limp. So far so good. Foxen can, can certainly limp call the 10 high suit. It's not that great, but he's getting a good price closing the yeah, action like going for the limp call. Seven? Before all the stuff, three. Okay. Yeah, we should see a limp call with the queen jack 10 6. So Duek is the raiser, Foxen limps and calls a raise. They're heading to the flop heads up. And Mickey also knows something. How to flop the straight with the nut flush draw. He could make a royal. No, he actually could not make a royal. Today we have a lot of confusion in the booth about when, <laughs> how, what constitutes a royal and a straight flush. Maybe you guys in the chat can let us know. How do you make a straight flush? What is required? How many royals do you make per year in PLO? I, I, most of my volume is these days live poker. Oh, yeah. So... The answer is zero. <laughs> 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 I remember once I flopped a straight flush here at Poker Go. That's it. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's the only that's one. Where it's, that's where it ends. Yeah, other, other than that, actually online, yeah, I think I had a royal actually yesterday. It's hard to get action. Wow. Sure. Meanwhile, Foxen picks up a heart draw on the turn. Duex still, of course well in the lead this, this Kurt I mean this will be a big pot because Duet will bet the turn he has the nuts with a redraw and Foxen has two pair an open in the straight draw and the flush draw which all in all sounds good until you know Duet's hand he's huh? going for a pot will Foxen call a pot size bet with a drawing hand If Foxen loses this pot, it is a significant portion of his stack. This is massive. He should know he is currently behind. 
I mean, Duek could do this with like aces with the clubs, but would he at this point of the tournament with his healthy chip stack on a such a dynamic board? Probably not. So Foxen should know he's behind, but is it worth to draw? Four hearts, four straight, for a boat. It's not cheap. It's more than Simao's stack to draw to the river. Foxen has Duick covered by just the slightest of margins. So in cash games, is this a spot where the money goes in fairly often? You call, you see rivers, and then and make decisions. And Foxen protects his stack, doesn't want to take the risk, and this will give Duek the chip lead. Foxen and Duek going back and forth. I think this is a great fold. It's a great fold in the tournament. There's a small chance he's going to run into ace, jack of hearts. And I'm saying like these very cautionary uh, statements that if you play regular PLO, PLO cash, you might think, oh, this is very nitty and tight. You can't compare PLO cash games and PLO tournaments. The context is so different. Uh, your chips are worth so much and Foxen has, like, if he had a million chips less now, it would be completely different. Like, his EV on this tournament would drop a huge amount. So protecting your chip stack is definitely a real thing in a tournament, and it isn't in a cash game. Someone who doesn't have much to protect at this point is Simao, but he picks up just racks over racks and can't do much below 10 big blinds now. Foxen picks up a playable hand. You can raise. You can limp. Generally speaking, when you have a pair, you don't necessarily want to raise because when you get three bet, you oftentimes have to fold. Is that the same for tournaments and cash games? In cash games, you can call more often because you're deep. It's kind of, in a simplified way, you can say the idea of like set mining and hold'em. Okay. It is worthwhile to call your pair in case you make a set. But if you're short in a tournament, do you call a three bit with deuces? Like probably not, because there's not enough behind to justify the cost. Okay. So here we have a dynamic flop of nine, five deuce, two diamonds. Turn makes this even more dynamic. Two flush draws on board. Foxen has an over pair and a flush draw. And Seidel has a straight draw and a flush draw. They both cover hearts. We don't know what Duek has. He has a five and a deuce, which, which is two pair. What's his most likely card? A diamond here, his fourth card? Uh, probably a nine of spades. Just a cold read. No, actually, <laughs> I don't think he has a nine of spades. I think he has the mm, ten of clubs. That is my read. Wow. Ten of clubs, chat. You heard it first. So, for, so going straight up for the five deuce as his his the, the, the strong part of his combo. Yes, yeah, so open ender with ten deuce, ten of clubs. Uh, Foxen has a gut shot straight draw at the bottom. He has six four on five deuce. Needs a three to make a straight. He also has an over pair still and a flush draw. Facing a pot size bet, he's in position. Cool. Doesn't want to let Mickey get away, just winning all these pots. It's time for a stand. River card is the eight of spades. Duek adds another pair to his collection. So Foxen picks up the blockers to queen 10. The only issue here is because there are two flush draws that busted, didn't get there. It's hard to represent queen 10. You're basically trying to make two pair fold and rep queen 10 on a two flush board that bricked. It's a hard story to tell, and if Foxen chooses to do so, it would also be an expensive one because he has to go big to make two pair fold. I feel like the one thing that we haven't seen at this final table that we saw at some of the other ones were 
bigger bluffs on the river. Just that I don't, I don't think we've really gotten to that point in, in a lot of hands here. Some of the other tournaments that played out throughout the earlier part of the week. Definitely saw some guys <laughs> will, willing to go for it in some very creative spots. And we'll see if Fox and Alex to take that route or... 960. He goes wow. The full pot. Spot on, Fernando. <laughs> you got to go big if you want to pull this off. You said it, and he's going for it. So Flop goes check through. He calls a turn on Jack-9. I mean, the... the the queen 10 combo is there. Duek knows that as well. However, Foxen limped the button. Usually, limping ranges contain a lot of pairs. So, does he put Foxen on 10s, on queens, specifically because he limped? There are some breadcrumbs out there that would tell you that Foxen might have a pair. Wow, and Duek lets it go. We will never find out what his fourth card was. No, we know it's the Ten of Clubs. <laughs> <laughs> but it is is—it is, it is uh, the first real aggression, Donnie, we've seen at this table. You know, previous final tables, Just we've seen lots of, you know, big swings for the fences. Do you guys want to take a 10 minutes break, or is like five enough? I'll do a short one, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Use yeah, the clubs was his other card. Take a little bit. What? Yeah, yeah, folded a folded set? It. Oh, my I God. Duek yeah. folding a set. If you're fine with that. Maybe three. all the talk or he no. gave Fox and backfires four. now. Fox and had enough. I did one three. <laughs> Huge hand <coughs> for Fox and, and you know they're virtually tied again at the top of the counts. Parson has not been active, sort of handcuffed by what's going on around him. Yeah, it just shows that this is, we're looking here at a very small sample of hands, and it's easy, especially if you see the faces and and whatnot to think that one player is tight, another player is loose. But the reality is if you have garbage hands, you like what are you supposed to do? You just you know, you still need a good hand to play poker. It's not the good old days where you have a good image, it's time to play five twos offsuit and hold him. <laughs> like that's not the reality of poker nowadays. You need something reasonable to play with. Chao looking down at another hand that doesn't qualify. He's about to get into the big blind. And the interesting part about this structure is that when you're in the big blind, you also are anteing a full big blind. So you're losing two big blinds, which is very significant for Chao. Might see some action in the next hand is what that means, because Chao is, is going to be reduced to just a few big blinds behind. Fox and opens 200,000, back to 2.5x. This hand makes a lot of sense. He blocks. He doesn't want to limp ace 10, 10, 9, rainbow. It just doesn't flop good enough. And Elis has a really good price, but the clients the invitation, given probably how short Simao is to his left and that Simao is about to be in the big blind. Can certainly make an argument to defend Queen Jack 8, 5 single, but Jimao is, or Simao is potentially soon all in and busting before that is not a good proposition yeah just a reminder of the payouts the final five guaranteed 87,150 next payout is 118 so significant pay jump there and then we go up to 161 so lots of money on the line here at this final table so far, Fox and Duick almost playing heads up with the rest of the table sort of spectating. Seidel, Donnie, even despite doubling up, still hiding in the corner. He's just chilling. <laughs> He's just chilling. Fox and really opening up the box now with Ace Jack 6 4 triple suited. Also known as tri suited, <laughs> but we're not going to say that here. <laughs> well, uh, the, the two the two new terms I learned is the tri suit, and uh, my my new favorite is skittles. What is skittles? The rainbow. Oh, taste, uh -huh. taste is the rainbow. <laughs> okay. 
Taste the rainbow. I like that. I saw that <laughs> bent. Taste the rainbow. Put it out. <laughs> one of each chip. That used to be a big thing. When I when uh, I was playing home games, I would say one of each. Rainbow <laughs> bet. <laughs> Three, Sixteen twenty-five, Donnie. No. All you can eat. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, Jao is down to five hundred and forty-five thousand to back to anti, or put the small ball in the you? middle, so down to five hundred thousand huh? after this hand. I don't think we saw Samao's hand on that last one, mm -hmm. but obviously not good enough as he just folded. Only, so he did have to, to forfeit those two big not, blinds, you. which, you know, when you're only operating with <laughs> nine big oh, blinds man. to start the hand, it's not, not that fun. Oh, I don't know. I've never, I've never yeah, it comes to a either. point where basically <laughs> you have no fold equity once you three bet. That's really yeah, unfortunate yeah. in PLO because if That's someone raises, and even if you wake up with a good hand, <laughs> you know that you will get called. Which in PLO is never run. super good news <laughs> because you're never dominating that much pre. Yeah, you just not happy with uh, him being so handcuffed given the stack sizes. And this folds now to Zhao. He's very short. And the reality is Fox and benefits from Zhao staying in the tournament. Well, Jiao, Jiao joked right beforehand that if it folds to, to me, I'm just going to raise and you're going to fold. And Fox said, yeah, no luck. Keep the short stack in. <laughs> I assume Fox <laughs> last, uh, probably wouldn't time? fold blind, yeah. but the idea is not that wrong, for sure. Especially with how short he is now. I mean, it's just these other players are so handcuffed. Fox and stack started to take on Josh Arie-like proportions. <laughs> high fours? Hmm? High oh, fours? Probably high fours right now. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Did f five by five for 365 the other day. It was like. All of them were up quick, so. Maybe maybe over five. I don't, know. I don't like trying Donnie. to do one rep max. Yeah. That's your peak, Donnie. What, you were you, what were you squatting? Do what you think. I, don't yeah. I don't know. I honestly That's don't nice know. Stand, right? But I could always do a lot with my legs. So, as some of you might know, I'm, a, I'm an avid cyclist, so my endurance is very good. But I'm also weak as shit compared to uh, <laughs> any normal human because all I do is to Foxen. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to see a PT friend of mine, and he's getting me into doing squats and, you know, doing deadlifts and learning how to be Ooh, more of a functional human being outside me. of riding the bike. I'm literally squatting like, oh, it's like embarrassing. It's like less than 100 pounds. Because I, I gotta get Listen, the form right. Whatever. All this it's, stuff not, it's not embarrassing. Every, everyone starts somewhere. That'd be like saying, like, if I got on a bike, yeah, I'd, I'd be embarrassing. I might not be able to ride half a mile. I mean, there's, I have no there's idea. There's nothing I want more <laughs> than having you try out to ride the Red Rock Loop on a bike. Just How many just miles is that? The loop, the loop is, I think, only 17, but has a very, very hard climb in it. Um, and I've, I'm always curious what a how long it would take an untrained cyclist to ride the climb, because it's it's pretty hard. Um, it's very scenic too. So I highly recommend if you're ever visiting Vegas and you want to just do something fun. Rent a, rent they rent bikes and stuff. It's really cool, especially when the weather's nice. But anyway, back to Fox and strength. My goal is to squat my body weight. That's my goal. So, so that's what, why what? that's why you're losing weight. Yeah, so probably. You can, strategy. you can get there quicker. Yeah, no, but that's why the number blew me away because he kn said high fours or 500s. In my mind, I need to do 180. Like that's so far away still. I mean, Foxen's also, I mean, college football player, obviously high school football player, probably probably played in elementary school growing up. So, I mean, he's probably been lifting for 20 years. Oh, my God, yeah. And eating for 20 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this goes in both ways. High protein. What a flop. I think Duick has the nuts with a flush draw. I think the flop is, yeah. Yeah, nuts, king high flush draw. Boxing holding a nine. It's not gonna cut it. Mickey. I, need, I need like a reality show with these two at this point. <laughs> I mean, like just, you know, they gotta like travel the poker circuit together, like hand in hand. Yeah, Mickey is thinking, 
Is it time to open a trap and just call? Should I raise? This feels like one of those spots where your hand is so strong. Raising is uh, perhaps getting rid of too many high hands. Yeah, if he, if he assumes that Foxen might be betting really light, calling makes a lot more sense. And, and he's right in this instance. Foxen only has an, I mean, he has king high, no draw. The five could be additional trouble for Foxen because now he, he doesn't have a straight, obviously, but the nine is still significant. He's unblocking spades, so you could make an argument that he might go three streets representing a straight, which would obviously be great for, for Mickey with the nuts. But he thinks better of it, and I can only imagine Nicky would just bet now. But maybe not. Maybe he just opens the door and really assumes Foxen is very light and can call, and it's time to slow play. Sixty percent pot gets it done from Duex. Looks like the players are going on a short break, and because of all the time travel we've done already, we have to and we are forced to take a break to keep intact the delay that we are working with. So we'll be back in about four and a half minutes. So short little break back in four and a half minutes with this final table. 550. Firth coming in with a raise here. 550,000 on the button. Action over to the chip leader, Negranu in the big blind. He's in there for a call. Heads up here to the flop. Queen nine six rainbow top two pair for Magranu queens and nines that nine on the turn improving Daniel to a full house he cannot lose this hand as long as he doesn't fold Daniel is first 1.4 out there 450,000 is the wager Earth here is operating with two pair queens and nines with that king kicker. Also has a gutter to a straight, but it would of course be no good if he hits it because Daniel's got a full house. <coughs> He's in there though, making the call. Seven of diamonds on the river. It's 2.3 million out there. Let's see what sort of sizing Daniel comes with here. stacks all running as close as they currently are, every single hand having massive implications. Firth 1.7 does have a queen. On the heftier side, which uh, at least from first initial reaction, seems like he's a little bit surprised. Piqued his interest quite a bit. 1.7 into 2.3. Does represent just about half of what Firth has call. behind. Makes the call. He's going to get shown the bad news here. Wow. Massive pickup for Negranu. Gets basically maximum value here from Firth. This pod worth 5.7 million chips. Negranu now sitting on 8.8 .8 million. And Firth all of a sudden down to just seven big blinds. Things are looking fantastic for Negranu.
Heisman and Lance Patel. Pretty much neck and neck for the shortest stack. Cut through stack. Patel here Hot. with the inquiry. Finds pocket aces on the button. Best case scenario off the short stack. And he tosses in the hot tackle? size raise. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> what, like he did say lines? before this hand, I'm going to uh, try the button thing yeah, out. Almost so. And then he finds a, finds a good one. Uh, quarter short. Four seventy five. Well, might, might end up going with this one, oh, given the positions. Oh. <laughs> got hungry. You made that yourself and then wrapped it like that? Yep. Yeah, it I looks, have these at home. Looks like you got it from a deli because of that. You're legit yeah. eating a sandwich. <laughs> and I know. Lucy Goosey. <laughs> <laughs> I paid nine dollars for that since you wrapped it. No. <laughs> You're not rich enough to buy this one uh, right now. Yeah, but you wrapped it up, so it went up oh. in value. Mm -hmm. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this, Muller coming table. over the top. He needed uh, a double call. Because like a and there it is. Patel yeah, finds yeah. what he is looking Still for. An opponent with an inferior yeah, hand. Nice. Oh, boy. All right. A great spot here Let's for go. Patel. Dylan, you got to pray for some hearts. I am. Clubs. <laughs> no, no. Clubs, clubs, clubs. Little error there nice with the graphic. Like <laughs> Wiseman not clubs. involved here. It is Wheel Patel versus really Muller. Patel's term of life on the line Just put the with case pocket ace. aces. What did you fold? What happens uh, when both players see two, two threes? Yeah, two threes. <laughs> I don't know if that cancels it out. Two, three, three, seven, I think. Uh, All right, we got to hope for some hearts. They were clubs, though. We need clubs. There we go. Cards are back. Yeah, grab them. Yeah, I got you. Welcome back inside the studio here. We are still alive with the final table of event number eight of the 2024 PGT PLO series. My name is Rem Karinkama. Donnie Peters alongside me, and Mr. Jay Nandis. Fernando Habegger, the brains behind Philo Mastermind, is with us to provide some analysis, <laughs> yeah. tell some stories about the great game of Pablo Not Nomar. Not anymore, though. No, he had the post. And we have a stacked final table for you. In case you haven't watched the previous few hours, Alex Fox and Mickey Dueck are in a fiery duel to determine who gets to be the table be the captain. Guy. You can be the ideas guy. Elis Parsonen is sort of caught in the middle here between the short stacks of Eric Seidel and Joao Samao. This has also led to Parson playing hardly any hands over the course of the previous level. We are now playing 50K, 100K with a 100K big line ante. And the King Queen 9-8 ends up in the muck here for Parson as Samao is down to just five big blinds. Joao basically wants to find a spot where he can raise first. We talked about fold equity before. He still can win the blind to man despite just raising himself. But if someone raises into him and he jams, he will always get called. Duek here with the potential to attack Seidel's blind. Do we have to be extra careful getting aggressive from the small blind onto a uh, big blind short stack in Podley Mid Omaha? Huh? Because you know there's there's a quite a few more. Um, potential options to be uh, fighting back with? Well, the, the main thing from the small blind is you get a really good price to call. So the dominant action is calling, <laughs> over raising, and the main really thing soon. you want to protect is that when you call, because you can call so many hands given the price you're getting, that you have enough good hands in okay. there that if you get raised, you can, you can continue. All right, so like I said, still five-handed here. If you want to play some poker yourself, you can do so right now on PokerGoPlay.com. Get it through the App Store or on Google Play, or just play in your browser. It is a free-to-play poker game that we are partnered with. So go check them out. Give them some love. They give away weekly real cash prizes as well through a sweepstakes model. So maybe you'll win a few thing or two. It's all possible on PokerGoPlay.com. Players have put their... Drink orders in. Can I get a one feature, please? Haven't seen any cocktail orders this whole week, Donnie. It's just been Fiji water. What is happening to poker? Everyone's a bunch of nits. <laughs> <coughs> no one wants to drink. James Calderao showed up yesterday and ordered a drink pretty early on. That's Tried, right. Offered a vodka to Fox, and Fox and said, no, no, thank you. Of course. Gone are the days where people were just enjoying a casual beverage during play. Well, we need Justin Young to get in the field. Yeah, just that, to get the McAllen ready. I guess I guess um, drinking is more of a cash game thing. 
certainly is. Uh, beer level in tournaments, too, True. right? Yeah. Beer level, yeah. Shout out Dan Smith, who cashed this event, by the way. Uh, Seidel here, all in with the king and the mystery cards. Yeah, you're pretty dead. From the small blind, after Duek raised the button with the queen, 8-5-5. Five, five. I had a queen, and Oh, Duek calls the all in. Oh, wow. Six and a ten. Versus a ten big blind shove. I mean, Samao is going to be very pleased to see this. I'm Seidel with king, 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 seven, huh? three. At least I'm chip leader again. Are you surprised to see Duet call him? Five, um, yes, he doesn't. He benefits from the short stack situation. Like he's pretty much getting the price two to one with his hand against an over pair, but he doesn't benefit from um, taking the flip, so to speak. Duek with seven outs here, an eight, a five, or a queen would send Seidel to the rail. An eight hits on the turn, and now Seidel on the brink of being eliminated. He now needs a king or a spade to stay in this event. Rough turn card for Seidel, who's been all in with success twice before. Question is, can he find some help here on the river? It's the seven of clubs, and Eric Seidel eliminated by Mickey Duek in a massive pot, 2.2 million in the middle, Mickey Duek now up to 4.9. And right now, wouldn't be surprised to see Zhuo Samao all in in one of the next few hands because he has just secured himself a nice little pay jump. Seidel takes home yeah, $87,150. Is that <laughs> Probably, right? <laughs> what did he say? He said, if, is that our word that a lot of people are probably going to cancel him for? <laughs> Doesn't seem like Mickey Duek has a care in the world. Um, 118 <laughs> k. Very similar <laughs> blind response. I'm not part of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't clip me. Yeah. <laughs> Especially on camera. You, yeah. you do you over there. <laughs> so, so Mao now guaranteed 118 k. Next pay jump. Forty-three thousand dollar pay jump. This was a big spot for Simao, obviously. Huge break for him. He has five big blinds. He's in the big blind. And uh, Elise, he wants Simao to go, obviously, because he's the next guy. Okay. It looks like it's going to put him in, kind of, with 9655. Five. Simao goes in with the king high rundown. Just like Remco said, next hand, he's yeah, all in. Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's got nothing, nothing left to live for, Donnie. That's right. He needs to just make yeah. a run. <laughs> <laughs> we need small he has cards. Four overs, Big so cards. he is the favorite, fifty-seven percent. That's when I start to get back to the but turn. Elis knows how to win these. So. <laughs> <laughs> he has been rather successful in showdowns here during the PGT PLO oh, series. No you don't know? No, I know. It's you do? Yeah. I'm very confident. On this one. Pink eight. Oh. You're confident? Very confident. He's what do you think? Who's going to win? I said. You see, I think I think you're a pretty big favorite. Yeah, man. <laughs> look at this flop. <laughs> Great for me. All right, here comes the flop. It's fantastic. Queen nine three. Four. Indeed, a great flop for nine. Samao. Four. I put a four of spades for. Oh wait, never mind. Four for sweat. Can be luck. So Eli's not even asking for the five. He just wants four to spades. Four. Also still <laughs> That's too greedy. All right, king yeah. queen jack. Yeah, if you ask for the jack, you usually get punished. Ace of spades on the turn. Samao yeah. has the higher spades. Right. Parson and looking six, for a nine, nine, five, or six. six five, nine. Can't be spades, no. though. And there's only one spade out of those three. Samao about to double up to just shy of what Parson and has. We create two see? short stacks at this table. It is the seven of clubs on the oh. river. Did you? And Samao. It's coming your end. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he lost for a second there? Or not? It looks like he was ready to leave. Yeah, it, it does. It did. He just <laughs> ready to throw the time extensions over, but then he's playing it off like it was a joke. I don't know. He said, my years of experience tell me that I think he <laughs> thought he <laughs> it was a bad river. But this is TV. This is live. 
happens. Yellow four cards. Sometimes you don't see. I it. Actually, yesterday I played a hit with a guy. Pretty good. Rivered and he had ten six four four. And he stood up you and right, ran out the room. Huh? Like eighty and then, with our two Ron, hands. Like uh, Ronald went after him and found him in the bathroom, I think. Mm -hmm. And he said, mm -hmm. "I know I won." <laughs> <laughs> and he came back and said, "He knew he won. He just left." But he was just like he had to really pay. So he just won the hand right. before collecting the chips or counting anything. <coughs> he just left because he had to go to the bathroom. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. We were like, this guy's gone. He's just like, you can't find him anymore. So he, he went outside, went back in. He's like, he's gone. Bathroom. Ah, he's here. It's just, he knew he won. <laughs> That's amazing. So never leave before five, five. the dealer announces that you are out. When the dealer tells you, sir, it's time to leave, then you leave. <laughs> my, my favorite thing, which is most prevalent in Omaha 8 or better, yeah. is when players just oh, all yeah. table their hands and sit back and wait for the dealer to figure it out. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Might get scared that it'll win there. Jima <laughs> 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 all in back to back. If Duet calls this all in, yeah, this would be. I mean, it's hard to be in better shape than this. He has the king really covered, the spades covered, the deuce covered. Duke is getting a good price, but. This is not a good hand, and he thinks better of it. I mean, the Samao rise My through the ranks has now officially queen. started. Really? Queen. Yeah. Indeed. So tilt. And uh, Elis doesn't like it's that, obviously. Close. He lost the flip against Samao. Down to a million, yes, 10 big find blinds. That's the card that I pulled. Understand why he lost the flip. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is, I'm supposed to win these, right? This is what happened. Yeah, I'm not used to this feeling. Yeah. Wait, is this? How much you have now? This is, this is what they Three talk nine. about when they talk about variants. <laughs> this. Four. And Mickey has has raised a yep. few times. Three two. Loose, and five. Sometimes it worked against three, two, two, the side L. Three two seven sometimes five, including the small one. Will he slow down or not? He does have the chip late, but he also has to be careful with these kind of short stack players. We saw this dynamic a lot today. Everyone folds to Fox and they're playing blind on blind, but this hand is complete garbage. But he gets a walk for the first time. I think so. If you're Foxen right now, should you really be tightening up with Samao and Parsonen basically being a, a three bet away from being all in? <laughs> it's a it's a thin a thin line between tightening up and trying to claim more chips. At the end of the day, Foxen can put a huge dent into Duek stack, so Duek has to be a bit careful. And at the same time, the thing about various stack sizes is that you usually play your opponent's stack size. If you have 30 big blinds but your opponent has 10, then you play 10 big blinds of Ekta. Oh, I'm so sorry, I had more than that. Duek needs to be a bit careful raising too much because uh, Elis and Simao can 6, yeah. very profitably reach him if they think that it. he's super sorry. wide. Else, right. you have 9? I started with 10 point... Uh, Before posting? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 10.5 bigs. Foxen has an open here. Potting. Elis. Oh, Duke folds 9977. It's interesting. It's not unreasonable, but it's interesting. And uh, Elis can call or fold. I think, all things considered, folding is probably the play with Simao in the big by the next hand. If you had a bit of a better hand, like the 4 would be a. Uh, Six, or if his hand would be double suited, but as it stands, it is. It's kind of those spots where you lose both ways. You can call; it's not great. You can fold; you're not happy. He does make the fold, and really shows. You know, Elis can also play tight in in the right moments, shifting gears. 
it just hurts that much more when you already have 200k out there for the anti and the big blind. How much you have, Me? 135. 1 million, 300. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you guys would benefit much thing? more from putting a dent, a, a dent into Z Mouse, a Z -mouse uh, stack uh, versus a Fox? No, no, no. This. Same order. And I have 15. Can I have 15 back? One. Are you, gonna change? you said 135, right? Yeah. Put that right. Yeah. So if Elias was to take a stand yeah. or a gamble, no, no, it would no, be no, better to play against Z Mouse. 135. 125 back. Flip oh, the stack okay. sizes. You want me to draw? If he doubles through Fox and like, yeah. it doesn't yeah. Yeah, yeah. change that Switch. much. Thank you. No. For you, no problem. You can ask anytime. No need, no need to know anymore. All right. So the reason he's thinking about this is because Simao has the bigger stack. If Elis folds versus the race, Simao probably just folds almost everything. And now Elis has a snap Pop. open. It's time to switch up the stack sizes. Make it 3x. Simao is getting a great price. This hand Started with 850. Bit. Just want to call. Three, right? Holding I'm supposed to do here. Makes no sense. Yeah, I can tell. Like if I mean they're gonna go here we go. Out. Yeah. I double one of them the up. two short stacks going head to head. Years. King five three, rainbow flop, Just king five for Parsonen. Can't go wrong with King Four. Pair in a flush draw for Simao. This money will go in mm -hmm. and uh oh, actually there's no flush draw. He just has a pair. Seven there, right? Yep. Half pot size bet. Very unfortunate spot for Simao mm -hmm. because his pair is do I mean, it's not dominated. He already runs into two pair. That's the issue. He can't hit two pair and be good. But probably assumes he runs into a king. He runs into even a hand like ace, queen, jack, five, where he still has all his two pair outs and they're alive. Maybe a hand like ace, queen, jack, deuce, where he has a where his opponent only has a gut shot. Maybe a hand like ace, king, queen, jack. Even against those hands, he would do fine against the half pot size shove. It is just that Elis has two pair, and a little smirk on Elis' face. He's like, <laughs> I'm about to double through here. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, this is awesome. When this transaction takes longer than a few seconds, yeah. you're, you're, you're really happy with two pair. But also, he's happy because he feels like he's going to get called. He's like, oh, yeah, this, this is you what it feels pair? like again. I say no because he has two pair. Little table talk. One little one. Which one? <laughs> oh, okay, now he really well? wants to get called. He knows that his <laughs> opponent has a small pair. Oh, that's bad for me then. I mean, all things aside, I think Simao cannot fold a pair here. He, he's getting too good of a price. 550. I mean, he's actually, yeah, 20. He needs like 28% equity. I mean, there's some ICM. Oh, be small blind. He has one back draw flush draw and back draw straight draws. I don't think he can fold this one hand. Back door, no good. But if he would fold, it would be a fantastic fold you because he's almost dead. Cards. Oh my god. Good fold, the soul read. Great discipline by Samao and stacks now very similar between right? these two. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard it, but when that hand was playing out, Bit of seriousness between Duek and Fox, where Duek was asking Fox, and like, I don't know what to do here. I think referencing being on the button and just folding, kind of going back to what you said, where he's kind of a high stakes cash game player. Foxen's obviously a tournament player, so trying to pick Foxen's brain for some of that tournament dynamic. Like, do I just open here? Do I limp? Like, what do I do if I double one of them up? It's bad. Like, yeah, it's, it's always good to ask the players on your table, I don't know like the final right. table, how to play better against them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi. Especially the, the, the player with the stack closest to you, you know? <laughs> Might end up heads up. 
Do you mind helping me out to get more <laughs> chips? <laughs> yeah. Let me know how to play better. <laughs> well, let me, let me ask you this. Would a, a top-notch Hold'em tournament player, like world-class, like Foxen, have an advantage over a really good PLO player who has no cash, no tournament experience? No. So the, so the PLO aspect is more important than the tournament concepts. The PLO aspect is the dominant aspect, for sure. Obviously, some No Limit Home players, I guess, think of it differently. I mean, if you have no... There's a difference between having not done the reps in ICM and not understanding ICM. So if someone just plays PLO turn a PLO tournament and doesn't think about ICM, he might be in a disadvantage, probably is. But if you haven't trained ICM, but you know how it kind of works, and right. you're a PLO player, for sure you're going to be in an advantage. Duek here, coming in for 250, 9553. Seems a, a premium bit premium liberal there. Three, right? no, this is three. a premium. You can flop three, a, three, seven, five total. You can flop a, a, a quad. You can flop quads, if, if yes. two fives come on the flop, <laughs> he has quads. He made sure he had a Badoogie, so he has four flush draws. Fox is dead <laughs> with his hands. This is nothing <laughs> to do. Like ace, ace, queen, four. But how will he play it? I mean, he's sort of handcuffed with the stack sizes, so. Yeah, if Foxen, let's say he were to come with a three bet here. I mean, they're deep Pretty enough that Duet could just flat a lot of hands and really just make it really weird pre or post flop for Foxen. So you were dead. that's likely why Foxen here just comes with the flat. And in a way, he's going to kind of try and keep the pot as small as possible. Unless he obviously smashes something, then go crazy. But with the other two stacks, Parson and Samao, Foxen certainly does not want to just blow up all of his equity. Exactly right. And if you are a PLO cash player, is here, like uh, going back to the previous conversation, and you look down at aces here and you think, well, I have aces, I'm always going to three bet, uh, then you're going to make some pretty basic fundamental ICM mistakes. They will I mean, be even if you let's say they were to have gotten it in, as you've pointed out many times, the equities tend to run fairly close, so you're never just going to be like 85 percent in a lot of spots, yeah. you know, especially with the money it's goes not in. Like pretty, where you yeah. pick up aces and you're just thrilled no matter what doesn't exist in PLO. There's a game within the game. So Duek fires the flop and gets called. He has something to work with. Like, nah, I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily, like, even if, if you play heads up PLO, you wouldn't even play this hand. So this is a very unusual hand to commentate on. But he has some blockers in some ways. So what you want to think about is what hands you're trying to fold out. If your opponent has ace four, Sure, he doesn't block that. That's good. If your opponent has pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket tens, you don't block that either. So his bet in some ways makes sense in the f in, 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 the, in the sense that he's unblocking hands that can fold. And also he could pull something off on the river. He can hit a three, he can hit a five. He could barrel through on like a deuce or a six, maybe representing a straight. But Foxen didn't call aces to make this fold here. So he's going to call again, and uh, Duek should be really worried by now. Facing two calls, you're going to see aces a lot. Now, Duek hits his kind of magic card, the deuce, so he could represent ace-5 five or 5-6. Five, 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 However, if Foxen has a king, would he really be willing to fold a king versus the unlikely backdoor straight? We did see Foxen bluff Mickey before in a big spot, but can Mickey do the same thing here? Foxen range looks really strong. I think it would work against aces. Is but this a spot going back to you said the Foxen bluff is? Does the bluff here have to be large? Does he have to come with you know basically pot? That's what Foxen did before against him, right? I think right? you can go half pot and and get, you could, because you bet three times on such a static board, you could get credibility. I think it... 750? Ooh, this is big. Okay, this is big. Half pot for Duek. What what value range is Duek representing? Is it simply just a king? It's a king or better. I wonder if every king is betting. Probably yes. So, Fox has to think about it. Okay, what hands do I, do I arrive on the river with? I call the flop, I call the turn, we are now on the river. 
I have obviously all the King X hands that I call. I have pocket fours. Sometimes I have a straight somehow. And I can call all these hands. Now this time I have ace, ace, queen, four. So he's basically at the bottom of his range. He does block four, four, and he does block ace, five. So that's the good news. But basically, after calling twice and facing a third barrel, could he just stick to only calling a king or better and then just fold the rest? That's basically like how you break down a call down range, theoretically speaking. You would fold some hands, you will call some hands, and you're trying to understand where in the hierarchy your hand lays. And he does make the fold. Do it. Like you need to show this hand. This is a monster <laughs> hand. Nine five, like showing to the table that you raised nine five five three rain and then tripled it off into Foxen is oh, a yeah. must show for image reasons. So Pure scam. definitely big play there what? by Mickey. Your scam. Yeah. It was a scam. This was it. This is like huh? Nada. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he knows. Elis is like this. Is, this makes no sense. You had nothing. No, I, I said very good. I know yeah. what you said. <laughs> yeah, but I'm responding to what he said. I understand. He said nada, and you said muy bien. Yeah. So I, I, then I was further inquiring. You had a good hand? Question mark. I never said any. I never said I had a good hand. I didn't say that you did. I was asking you a separate question. <laughs> Stone cold bluffer. Very slow. <laughs> I'm just responding to what he said, and then you said, "Do I have a good hand?" Which I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> right, then that's the end. Okay. Oh, sorry, William. It's okay. Looks Call like him William. <laughs> looks like it might not have worked against Elis. He knew what's up. I mean, he had a better angle as well, <laughs> looking at uh, Mickey from that position. I mean, Foxen is a guy that uses live reads, to my understanding, and like sitting next to each other is certainly a disadvantage in that sense. I, I do like that, that Mickey was able to find that triple barrel. You know, being a, a high-stakes cash game player, maybe you say, okay, I fired two streets, I'll back off here. But full leverage on the stack, you know, ICM, all that sort of stuff at play there. He said, listen, this guy's got to have it to call me. And he got him to put the best hand in the muck. So I, I really like that from him. Yeah, this could pay dividends. I mean, if, if uh, he plays live cash and people see... Him raising the nine five five three rain. <laughs> I mean, you gotta put this guy in action, you know. Like that's open Double. the gates. So he, it definitely could pay dividends here being on TV, playing, uh, playing some marginal spots. So why do you so think Parson was able. so quick with the comment to say that this was nada? <laughs> so Jackson eight seven. On the river, you should always ask yourself like, wh no. what is the finish value bet? And if Mickey doesn't value bet, let's say hmm. Ace King which is reasonable to assume that like, ace-king is not necessarily a value bet for three streets. Then it really becomes Almost only raise. boats, maybe straights, and that's just not many hands. Right. And if you then think about, well, what could he bluff with? And the answer is, well, basically anything that he has pre-flop. It's just a spot that is very easy to overbluff and hard to hit, hit oh, no, correct with it. value versus bluff fr uh, frequencies. Go. How much you have those? Uh, I started with uh, 12.5. So Simao Persin in equal stacks, but Elis in the big blind, which means he has two big blinds less. At least one big blind less that is in the middle. Oh. Boxing with the limb. Again, if you have pairs in your hand, you don't really like raising that much. Oh. Mickey with the call. Elis with a beauty. Wow. What? 12 big blinds to start this hand. Waste no time. Foxen could fold and let Duek do the job. Like sort of not get his hands dirty because he is in a comfortable but like he's in a comfortable stack size position but he definitely doesn't want to lose this flip or this all in against the Elis. He does make the call though. I imagine Mickey can stick along as well. He has a very playable hand with the 8-7-6-5. Parsonen has less than a pot size bet behind. Mickey did fold. Ace-Jack 9 on this flop. Wow. Top set for Parsonen. <laughs> it's set over set. <laughs> and a set for Foxen as well. Wow. Set over set indeed. Foxen looking for a 9. That's a rough shape. That's how he does it. Flops his opponent almost dead. Still standing up, Donnie. 
Yeah, just wants to get a good look at how to win got, this You got to love Elis. I mean, he's just so much expression on the face. It's so great. It's so great. You got any back doors? That's no. a needle, by the way. Seven and ten. Yeah. A PLO player well, always knows back. if you have back oh, yeah. doors or not. <laughs> have any back doors? I oh, yeah, don't. Okay. That's good. <laughs> It's not a needle. He's I love it. Deuce wow. of clubs on the turn. Fox and down to just one out. Nine of clubs? Did we see someone fold the nine of clubs? I'm not sure. I don't think so. He just started counting the chips. That could be a, 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 a jinx move. <laughs> oh. Seven Six off. of clubs. Right. Close, but no cigar. And Eels Parson gets to receive another double up. And what you learn yeah. from this is that aces are a good hand in PLO. <laughs> he tripled, like he won three all-ins with aces. Yeah. Also, Foxen for the very first time in the danger zone himself. Parson is now second in chips. Mickey Dueck sort of taking a bit of a leap here. He has half, half of all the chips in play during four-handed play. Yeah, Mickey can't be happy about you just picking 1. up 2. chips here. Elis is a, a very experienced PLO player. <laughs> you don't want to face him heads up at the end. And he, he had to read on Mickey as well. He knew Mickey was bluffing. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> no. That's what I was wondering. Hearing some strange sounds coming from the set. <laughs> If you're just tuning in, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's see if we can hit 500 likes on today's video. What? My real math guy. We're joined in the booth by an expert today, Mr. Jane Andes, Fernando Habiger. You can't take the steam. There's no steam in this. Like when you pour the water over the hot rocks. Interesting. Interesting means you're, an, you're an idiot. That's love what these two. <laughs> I love these two. It's so great. They've been bantering all day. Then they spend, you know, three minutes talking strategy. Yeah. Like they're good friends. Now they're back to just like going to go at each other. It's great. Whenever That's someone says weird. interesting, that always means you're an idiot. Yeah, I mean, shut up, buddy. Pretty much. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? It's interesting that you think that. Especially, especially that the tone. <laughs> interesting. Yeah, or man, or an idiot. another one of my favorites, if someone says, whoa, that's crazy, that means that was a terrible story. <laughs> <laughs> that sucked. Ilias has an interesting spot. He, he decides, oh my god, wow. he decides to go for the three bet and, and fold. Uh, aces again, but this time for fold, Jao. Fold, 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 I fold. Aces? Parsonen in trouble, has his hearts dominated as well. Queens with the four versus aces with the four. Parsonen looking for a straight or some diamonds or else Samal will double up and all of a sudden be second oh, in no, chips. No this no is no. really all over the map right now. The queen is also dead because uh, Mickey opened with a queen of the butt. God, you guys are annoying as fuck. It literally opened like f seven times and got three but six. <laughs> oh, Mickey Duick. Where was his attitude during the main <laughs> event final table? Maybe he was too tired from playing for nine days straight. <laughs> All right, big showdown coming. Somehow 68% to secure yet another double up. Oh my god, there's the queen! Case queen for Parsonen. <laughs> it ain't over. Huh? <laughs> it ain't over. It ain't over until a fat lady Is sang. he gonna ask him about the back doors? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Samao with two outs. Fox is not happy. Turn card, the ten of hearts. Samao looking for an ace and an ace only, or he will be. Our fourth place finisher. Double we face like three or four times in break. Ace on the river. Mm -hmm. Only seems see. just. Look at this. I think you're going to win this. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> that means <laughs> I don't think you're going to win this. River card is the <laughs> Deuce of Diamonds. Samao sent to the rail in fourth place. And we are down to three players at this 15K PLO final table. Samao takes home $118,000. The final three guaranteed one hundred and sixty-one thousand dollars. Next pay jump, eighty thousand more, and then a heads-up pay jump, one hundred and twenty-four thousand. So, lots of money on there? the line here. As Alex Fox all of a sudden How finds himself as the short stack, which is fourteen big blinds. 
Uh, let us know in the chat who you're rooting for. All these players have a little something about them. Duek with the, the chirpy chatter today at the table. Alex Foxen, of course, biggest arms in all of poker. Would not want to tangle with that guy. And Niels Parsonen has already won an event. Four point Donnie, one here. as far as our overall standings, Four eight. is Parsonen the only one really contending against his uh, his fellow Finn? Yeah, he, he is. Um, Foxen and uh, Duek, I think, have like min caches or not, nothing too crazy. Or sorry, Mickey Duex making his first cash. Oh, so is Foxen. Both making their first cash. So I stand corrected. But Parsonen came into this event with 216 points. There are his, what, 348 up top in this one? How did 349 round up. Yep. So he can take the lead from, as you said, his fellow Finn, Sammy Sipola. And then it would basically be a two person race <laughs> entering the final event. Things can switch pretty quick here, so I wouldn't count Foxen out. I love the chat. Aaron says he's rooting for Foxen. The very next person in the chat says anyone but Foxen. <laughs> <laughs> very polarizing. We got some Finns in the chat rooting for Parson. The Finns have been dominant as always in Pot Limit Omaha. Yeah, can I get the it's just a shame that uh, Zygmunt is no longer part of the equation. And the stay, the stay with lobster. So. Did he just order steak and lobster? I mean, he uh, feels like he's gonna win the tournament now. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That is a <laughs> that is an order you make when you win. <laughs> yeah. Can I get the lobster for 160 bucks? <laughs> Lemongrass. <laughs> king queen three two hearts. No hearts to go around here, but both players flopping a king. Who orders a lobster at the final table? Yeah, that's very that's very. Special, <laughs> very special. Elis Parson and does that too. <laughs> if you, if you had if you had a big win tournament or cash, what's your celebration in Vegas look like? Well, usually when you win, you, when you win a tournament, you played forever and it's like late. <laughs> so I mean, last year I, I was runner up in one of the events, the uh, No Limit PLO mix, like the 5K, and it was late. I mean, I just went home and slept. And like you've had so much adrenaline, yeah. it just all dumps. You're just like, oh, like, I just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a double sauce. Double butter, butter sauce. Double butter sauce. Oh, my God. He's, he's going win. all in. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the restaurant equivalent of Honestly, going all he in. he thinks he won the tournament already. Steak and lobster yeah. with a double butter. Does he know that they're three-handed? Like, and he doesn't even have the chip lead? I mean, how he's, much? he's acting like he won. The, he's going to order champagne next. I can't wait. <laughs> how much? The, the question is, how much did he cross book? <laughs> and and who, who is on the receiving end of this pain? <laughs> that is incredible. Bring me the lobster champagne <laughs> double butter, please. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm going to win. Can I get the, uh, the the duck fat fried fries? I think Mickey needs to put in an order as well. Uh, here we go, Poker Go MTT Strategy Workshop. No Limit Hold'em, that is. I know you guys are all in the PLO mindset right now, but this, this is a No Limit Hold'em MTT Strategy Workshop from the studio, April 5, 6, and 7. And of course, entry into the workshop includes a satellite tournament to open. a US Poker Open event. Go to get.poco.com slash strategy if you want to join the fun. Andrew Moreno and Lucky Chewy will be the coaches for that in-person seminar in Las Vegas. Go check it out. Fox picks up ace, king, seven, seven. Should be good for an open. Just potting could be fine. Pot. Given what you've seen today so far, who has impressed you the most with their PLO tournament play? 
Did you I have mean, a different people play different strategies. Him. Some people play very solid is, and clear, like clean play, you could say. Queen, six, seven, eight, single. Queen. Uh, played clean. He took single the spots he like had. Seven or eight. Mickey, I think I Mickey impressed me in the sense that he has the most heart. He's just, he just wants to play this game and win this tournament. Ten times in a row, though. So I like I watching him. I have three bet literally like almost every time I open. I also like him complaining about I how. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is he gonna ask for a referee <laughs> or something? <laughs> Why am I getting three bet? <laughs> I'm supposed to that? just smooth sail, smooth sail into mm. this win here. Why is this guy world. ordering lobster, <laughs> even though I'm supposed to win? I had aces. Pretty, pretty lame. That is pretty lame. I mean, Fox and Fox and Spock and Queens either. bluff. That was cool. When we get like and uh, Mickey, my Mickey's uh, bluff with the nine five five yeah, three was also cool, for sure. Arsenal sure. looks like huh? the Not captain sure. of a ship, the That's way he looks right range. now with the hat and the glasses. One in a thousand. I guess it's a fancy ship that includes steak and lobster. Yeah, I wonder what the dressing style tells you about the playing style. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> Didn't you say, Donnie, that Isaac Haxton showed up today looking like he came out of the 70s? Yeah. I mean, it was just the colors were all like brown and tan, like my grandmother's couch. Was he wearing like the, 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 the bell bottom jeans? <laughs> no, but his pants were kind of like baggy at the end. They were like sweatpants, kind of. Corduroy sweatpants? Velvet? I, what my, one of my favorite things is when. The Eastern European players show up in a collar-coordinated tracksuit. I love it. <laughs> it's no good. <laughs> you guys are listening. Don't show up in now. Uh, red, <laughs> fully red, you know. Red velvet Louis Vuitton tracksuit. Well, if one of those yeah. players sits at your table, you, you know it's going to be a good day. <laughs> <laughs> With the loafers, right? With the little yeah, loafers? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I guess to each their own, but like... Do they have, I guess, like if I would walk out like that, my girlfriend would be like, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's no good. I mean, have you been to a grocery store in America? You gotta be, you gotta get rich enough that it doesn't matter. Like it does, you yeah. just wear whatever you want. They say like in Europe, they say you can't buy taste. Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why we always, we'd o we would always, Donnie and I would always cover these, you know, super high rollers back in the day. And oh. we'd always say that some of these guys are pajama rich. They yeah. just show up in their pajamas no matter what. Yeah. Meanwhile, million in the middle, we've arrived on the river. Foxen. Let's see what the river card is. I missed it. Uh, it's eight. Foxen hits a set on the river. Two pair. Does he know he has a set? Yeah, I think he's, he was just waiting to see yeah. Parson's hand. It's a, it's a slow showdown. Hand funeral. Yeah. This does even the field quite a bit more. 75, Boxing actually started to chip up here. 24 big blinds almost now. Yeah, every hand right now has huge implications on these stack sizes. Yeah, the pay jumps are big, but these stacks are, it's hard to really hide now. If you're six handed, there's another short stack you can fold. Yeah, we saw Eric said yeah. he'll hide for Was two, he playing? two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's smart, right? You can just hide and wait until someone busts. But three-handed, there's no hiding anymore. This is three-handed. Does a hand like this also become a lot stronger? I mean, you're still, yeah, you're on the button. Uh, well, really like this limb. He could raise this hand, but I think 
I think Elis is, assumes he is the best player remaining. I mean, he probably assumed that in the beginning of the tournament as well. But he okay. he probably thinks now, I want to go post in position and play as many flops, turns and rivers as possible, yeah. because he has the most experience in deep stack PLO. I mean, Mickey has experience as well, of course, but playing out of position is no fun versus Elis. So why raise pre and maybe get three bet, play like a low SPR, low edge situation? Why not just take a flop, play three streets, and just dominate? Let's see how that works out. So do it, flop the best hand, top pair, and a nut cut shot at the bottom. Backdoor nut hearts. Foxen with queens, and Elis has middle pair. Could go either way, you can bet and make a a hand like Foxen's fold, pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket kings. Could check back and maybe turn two pair, straight draw, flush draw. 175. He opts to go for the very small bet. Clears out some of the equity, makes some better ha better hands fold. But at the same time, it doesn't cost him much to see the turn unless he gets raised, which is pretty unlikely. Oh. Mickey makes the call, their heads up to the turn. Nine of hearts hits on the turn. Duek picks up a hard flush draw. Parsonen with two pair of tens and nines. Now, are we charging people here to see river card, or does ten nine have showdown value where you don't want to inflate the pot Nothing here? In there. So, his bet on the flop was very small, and I think that means you you can bet again for value. If your opponent folds a hand like Ace, King, Jack, pretty good news. And Duek never folds this turn. The only question is call or raise. If he opts to raise, he assumes he can make a better hand fold, which actually would be true in this case. 10-9 would fold against the jam. But there are a lot of better hands like Ace, 10 or Pocket, 10 that would never fold. So I don't think raising makes too much sense. And Duek does indeed come along with the call. Duek looking to improve here, but has many ways to do so. Wheel draw, flush draw, has an ace that he could improve with, but instead it is Parsonen who fills up, makes a full house. So this card is trouble for Duek, and the reason is because a lot of draws didn't complete. But also, the 9 pairing means that Elis mm -hmm. has less value combos, like 10-9 got reduced, Ace-9 got reduced, because there's another 9 on the river. So this will be a tough one to figure out uh, for Duek. He's going to face another barrel. And Elis has to decide how greedy he wants to be. Does he want to bet half pot and get caught more often, or go full pot? Full pot seems a lot. I think he probably is not going to go full pot, because Mickey's going to fold too often. Maybe like 1.5, 1.35. 1 1.5. Wow. It's almost like you know what you're talking about. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Very well said there. And Parson and applying that pressure, betting 1.5 million. And you can see by Duke's body language that there's a lot to consider here. So his narrative is obviously, what did he bet the flop with? Well, there is some king, queen, jack floating around, maybe. Then connected on the turn with hearts, maybe. Well, he's holding the king of hearts. That kind of is bad to call. What is Elis value betting? Well, buttons limp with pairs. He could have pocket tens. He could have pocket fours. Uh, could Elis have ace ten? Sure, possible. Could he have ace nine? Sure, possible. Could he have a ten that is getting turned into a bluff? Also a possibility. It's a very tricky spot. So you're right now accounting for all the things he could have. As you're running through this thought process, how do you weigh that against the bluffs that he could have? How do you basically create sort of that, that, that balance or equilibrium, and how does it ultimately weigh down to one specific side? So based on the bet sizing, you can say, maybe I want to call here about half my hands, maybe less because of the tournament. What are the best 50% of my hands that I can have? Well, Ace-10 is better than this hand because you block pocket 10s. You can, he can have Ace-10 for sure. He, uh, Duek can have Ace-10 for sure. 
He could have ace four, which is also better. He could have pocket fours, which is also better because he blocks fours. He could have no hearts, which is also better because he doesn't block the flush draws. So he, he can call ace nine, he can call ten nine, he could have ten nine as well sometimes. He could have pocket tens, he could have ace ten, ace four, four four. So Mickey could have all these hands on call. Once you have called all these hands, you might have called something like 25% of your range. Then what else do you want to add that is like really good to add on to that? And then you just have to weigh like how much do you like your king of hearts and five of hearts versus maybe other cards you could potentially have. So I would say you can look at this hand and say this is not one of my top off catchers. I'm going to call this kind of hand maybe like a third of the time and then just randomize and call or fold. Right. Like that could be a reasonable approach to take here. So you, you're trying to establish a percentage time that you call and then you randomize. So the thought process is how often am I, gonna, am I supposed to call this? 30% of the time, I randomize yeah, I for that decision. How often do I want to call? Create a hierarchy of hands you can have and then think where your hand lays in the hierarchy. If your hand is not... Is, if your hand is not a clear fold and not huh? a clear call, like then I it probably is a mix, called. and you can just randomize and say, okay, I want to. I think I want to call sometimes. And the the thing about randomization is that it also helps you to. Like, yeah. In it's poker, you can't just game. know what your opponent has, and you also can't it's know fucking, all the combos that are the best to call and the ones that I are not. So there is a fringe thing. area in between where you're like, I think these kinds of hands make sense to call, Before. but I wouldn't know if this exact hand or this exact hand is better, so I'm just gonna call all of them at a third of the time. And that way I make sure that I'm not just, I don't know, folding way it too hurts. much or calling way too much. Not hurts. Not hurts. And that, I think his hand sort of makes sense for that approach to call some of the time about check raising most, most of the time. He just said he thought about check raising the turn. Uh, by the way, we have a new sheriff in town. Parsonen sat on his hands while Seidel and Samal three were short. But now that it's three-handed, he's taking control. Of course, yeah, it helps yeah. to make full houses. But still, Parsonen showing off his skills up to 4.7 million. Foxen and Duek now trying to claw back into this match. And it's been a great final table so far for just tuning in. My name is Rem Karinkama. Donnie Peters, as always, co-commentator. And we have a special guest today and also tomorrow, Mr. Jane Andes. Fernando Habiger. I feel like nobody calls you Fernando anyway. It's 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 all about the nickname. My mom still calls me. <laughs> <laughs> where where does the Jane Nandes name come from? I used to produce rap music or yeah, yes, record show rap music. Know, That's also how I learned recording and making videos and so <laughs> on. And I used to have an alias that was similar to that, but Poker Stars had less characters available, so I Is used Jane Nandes as an abbreviation. Later. Wow. But yeah, m a lot of people, when I see them in the poker room, they think my first name has to start with the J. Right, right. right. <laughs> hey, like Jay, what's up? Like, okay. <laughs> Not sure yet, <laughs> but probably. I mean, how about you? Seems like a lot of fun them? to go. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people made up their nicknames when they were like 18. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if the turnouts you know, 15 years ago, like, like, what well, sounds just good, and then suddenly again, you stick with that. Unmissable. Yeah. So you were producing music? Were you rapping yourself, too? Yeah. That's... I produced like a hundred rap songs in my teens. Wow. But in Swiss German though, not in English. Yeah. So that's how I learned like audio and recording and music in general. There's only one German rapper that I know, Peter Fox. Peter Fox? Yeah. Is that a, is that a rapper? It's a German rapper, yeah. Interesting. I'll send you I'll send you one of his songs. Elis has a spot here. He could race, he could limp. I assume he's gonna just limp. Gonna apply pressure. Okay, six hundred thousand. It's interesting if this is gonna work against Duek. Is Duek really gonna fold pre? He does. Okay, he's fed up now. <laughs> Elis is on the train. <laughs> you could tell by that yeah. that the way he acted when he folded there. Like this is how it's gonna be now. When uh, someone right. orders the steak and lobster double butter, you know it's over. A hundred percent. It's like, Vin mindset trick. it's like Vince Carter at the all -Star I really game. hope this this lasts long enough that it gets delivered. <laughs> it was a good call. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want this to end and then he like goes and eats it at the bar. I want him to Yep. I want him to be eating the lobster, take a bite, and then say pot. Like that's what <laughs> I want to happen. Like, like, like dip it in the butter. <laughs> dip it in the butter. Pot. <laughs> like, that's what I want to happen. Yeah, I think we need a winner's photo with <laughs> the lobster. Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. 
think you should just order two lobsters now. I think that would that would be the way to sort of <laughs> to raise raise yeah, the steaks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna order two lobsters. You guys have a steak with like gold on it or yeah. something? <laughs> something really expensive. I'm sure they can do it if they can uh, if they can serve you a, ha a burger for a hundred bucks. <laughs> they'll, yeah, exactly. they'll, they'll find an expensive lobster. Farson and finds aces on the button. Skittles though, it's Skittles, so it's not that valuable. A good friend of mine, by the way, when I first started playing online, his name online was The Lobster, which I thought was a really a clever, nice name. clever name. The other day when Cipolo won, Mickey and Helis were in the winner's photo. Oh. You think Mickey's going to get in the winner's photo if, if, <laughs> he, <Elis> if he loses <laughs> heads up? I mean, it looks like he's <laughs> getting frustrated over here. Could get frustrated yeah, more on this hand. 2.45. Spirit is gone, but this <laughs> yeah. quickly change after his hands. Du Duex's uh, demeanor is fully based on how his stip ship stack is uh, is trending. And Parson in here flops a boat. Duex drawing stone dead. Yeah, is this the thought like to slow play here? Not really with the image, and he's not blocking kings, queens, jacks, or tens. Got it. But I'm, I'm surprised that. Uh, Duick didn't just open fold, you know, just like the fan. <laughs> Blob comes, doos, doos, doos. Why would something good ever happen? Just fold. His open fourth fold. time with aces today? Yeah. I believe. Must be nice. 2.3. Oh, close. Parson is really, really starting to run away with this now. To just about 60% of the chips in play. Honestly, the lobster, that was the strongest play of the day so far. <laughs> Just the lobster order. <laughs> Can I get a lobster? It will take an hour to get here. I'm still, still going to be here, don't worry. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be here eating. Yeah, that's a risky order. I guess he's going to play the 25k afterwards. Eating the lobster next to Ike Hexen. <laughs> Maybe next to Negranu, you know, yeah, yeah. The, ve the vegans. Queen, queen, ten, six in the small blind. As I'm learning here, it's better to limp in with those pairs. Don't want to get re-raised. Yeah, you would use some, like, some of the queens you can, like, limp raise, just trying to get it all in the flop with, like, easy decisions. This hand okay. would be qualified for like a lip call. He lives okay. with pocket aids. Okay. Duke's Queen's strong here. Checks the turn, like, I could imagine two hours ago he would have just bet the turn here and be like, let's get some value. Right. Let's okay. rumble, but he feels a bit defeated at the moment against the Finn. Duke does get the check mark here. No player with spades. Also, not a whole lot to fight for here. Small pot. Queens. Gets checked down. Do it gets to show down the queens. And perhaps perhaps stacking a few chips gives him <laughs> a little more of a positive feeling here as Parson and tosses his cards high towards the muck. Queen, queen. 10 6. Queen. As far as the cash game action in Vegas, uh, Fernando, Nine, what, six, what is sort of a common. A uh, stake to see, and, and, and what do you sort of no, encounter across town, or is it only at Aria? Like, what, what's what's sort of going on lately? As far as PLO yeah. goes, which is the only one that I'm really informed about, the the most yeah. consistent game is the five five ten at the Aria. And it runs every day, multiple tables, almost around the clock at any any weekday at any time. And a few months ago, they allowed the double straddle, so you're playing five five ten twenty quite frequently, maybe half the time. It's a great game, 2K max buy-in. Uh, seems, sh seems shallow for a straddle yeah. game. Which allows for a lot of gambling. Like people not, uh, are not as afraid to lose a, a huge amount of big blinds. For the quarter 50 game, which runs uh, not always, but sometimes, depends who's in town and if there's a series running like this, that is an uncapped buy-in. So when people buy in for ten thousand dollars, for example, they're sometimes more afraid to get the money in yeah. because you're two in a big blend steep and it's more money o overall. So that game runs uh, frequently, but not always. 
And then the one two at P uh, at Aria is also at that they raise the max bind to one thousand. It's a five dollar bring in, so it still plays a kind of like a five five PLO. Uh, I mean, people can bind for two hundred obviously. Uh, and then at the win, you have a five ten PLO. You have one two PLO as well running, not as frequently as the Aria, but it does run. And uh, as always, like Bravo Poker is your friend. But if you come to Vegas, there is PLO action. There will be some PLO action for sure. Yeah. Boxing gets a break here because he flops top set, but it's hard to get a lot of value if your opponent has bottom pair no draw. Also, not really a hand to bluff with here for Parson. Exactly. Hmm. on Fox in here who's deliberating whether he can slow play this or whether he needs to get some money in now. He is by far and away the short stack and winning this hand would really help him close the gap with Duek and he bets 350. Quick fold from Parson and this is a crucial one for Fox and to win here. One guy in the chat says, what order will nullify ordering a lobster? <laughs> Another guy says, Order a, a rare steak and eat it next to him. <laughs> maybe that's the play. Maybe with your hands too, but then maybe go wash up. Just uncooked. <laughs> uh, check out OctopiPoker.ai, a fun, social, and affordable way to learn poker. Join the growing Octopi tribe at OctopiPoker.ai. It is your, poke, your path to poker mastery. You can also scan the QR code on your screen if you want to get involved with them. Lucky Chewy and Nick Schulman behind that product. They do great, <sighs> great things as well, and you can Sign up for free on octopipoker.ai. The chat is confused with the temperature in the room. They're <laughs> like, <laughs> Elis is wearing like it's extremely cold and uh, Foxen ready to go to the beach. It's funny, I've, I've uh, spoken to Foxen about this before. He runs really hot. He's usually the only player at the WSOP who is wearing shorts, flip flops, and a t shirt. What? And uh, I'm sure it has something to do with the fact that he's so well insulated uh, with all that, all that mass he has on him couldn't do it. I mean, in Vegas in general, if you play poker for people listening, it's definitely more on the colder side. It's oh, yeah. not warm. I mean, it's cold and good. Like, you stay awake and stuff, but you shouldn't show up in flip-flops. Like, it's you're going to be very, very cold, especially at the World Series. Oh, yeah. I feel as though the Rio was even colder back in the True. day. Uh, there were some, some parts of the room where you could just feel the cold air blowing. Um, I know that at the Horseshoe there was one table they never used because it was right below the fan. Uh, but it's definitely a funny thing in Vegas where it's 100 degrees outside and it's only like 60 inside. Yeah, the Aria has like one or two tables that are the, the coldest tables in the rooms. <laughs> uh, Parson, by the way, raising pot here on the button with a 75 deuce. I think Mickey's just going to fold. Oh, this is the last time bank. Ooh. I don't have any more time exchanges. I guess it's dead. Is my hand wow. dead? Wow. Yeah. Okay. So my hand's dead. Wow. That's interesting. Now. Do you want it to be dead? I don't really know, to be honest. If it was single suited, I would probably shove. Mickey sounds like he's coming from a long night out or something. <laughs> like, I he, don't know what's happening anymore. He sounds like he's losing money today, but he's, yeah. he's actually <laughs> uh, already guaranteed quite a nice pay payout here. Uh, final three, if you're just tuning in, guaranteed $161,000. Making it the heads up would guarantee you 224. I said it before. I mean, Mickey impressed me with the biggest hearts. He had the biggest heart so far, but he's he's in a swinging mood. Hopefully, he can re regain some momentum here. Almost starting to feel bad for the guy. Uh, <laughs> I think he's going to do all right. <laughs> <laughs> Foxen wasn't really involved in that many like big all-in pots. He came in as the chip leader, but he's still around, three left. Obviously, everyone has a very fair shot at this tournament still, given how close the stacks are and how big the blinds are. How much was the bind? This is a $15,000 
tournament. As it says in the title of the video. <laughs> and now you're expecting too much from the audience. <laughs> chat. Chat doesn't want to retitle. Uh, shout out to Jason in the chat. He says, glad to see this is still going. Yeah, it's been a really fun final table, actually. Uh, we're three-handed now with three of the more aggressive players. Parsons still hiding behind that enormous hood. And Duick finds aces. I feel like all that, all, all that complaining has paid off. Well, these aces... They can't lose. 525. <laughs> but not this time. Yeah, quick fold by Parson. His queen's going to muck. Fox folds as well. And Duek lets it go. Uh, interesting, perhaps, dynamic change that Duek has no time banks left. Yeah. That's interesting. I didn't notice that he's using them up so much. I saw some hands where he was tanking pre, but you usually get quite a few. And you can see uh, Foxen has still a lot of time banks, and I think Edis has Four all of them since they won. Yeah. He has a huge stack of time banks. Yeah, yeah Foxen has maybe four or five, five left there. Yeah. It's like a solid two, two and a half Back. minutes. Edis has probably ten or something. The shot clock does really make the tournament play a lot more exciting to watch. Just uh, think back of World Series Boker main event, where, of course, kind of impossible to have a time bank clock with so many inexperienced players uh, needing to have some time to decide. But I'll never forget the Adrian Attenborough tank during heads up play. I believe he went in the tank for 17 minutes. Um, that should definitely be outlawed. 4-4-3 four, four, deuce, double suited. It looks pretty, <laughs> but not even Elias could pull this one off. It's not Omaha hater, but her. Fox and now. I mean, he oh. can put a serious dent into Duek's stack. Comes with the limp, and Duek picks up another monster. Ace, king, queen, ten, single. Huh. 450. Great, 450. Foxen has the king 976. With a king high suit, this would certainly be a call. With the nine high suit, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It might be a call, it might not be a call. It's certainly on the, uh, the thinner end. As we're heading to the flop two ways. Wow. King. Foxen, two okay. pair. And do it, top pair, top kicker. There's already a million in the middle, so this money is going to go in one way or the other. Uh, Duek has 2 million and Fox in 1.5. So if you're Fox in here, you just go for check raise? You don't have, you don't block aces, which will call you when you jam. Could you, could you flat? I mean, you could flat. It really depends on. It would, I guess, it would make more sense if you had an ace or a straight draw alongside or a set. A set for sure. Two pair is right on that edge between. Maybe I just want to get it in now before, especially he's out of position, before the turn river rolls out. He does pot and Duek makes the call. Foxen's tournament life on the line. He's a 60% favorite. With two cards to come, Duek looking for an ace, a queen, or a ten. Fox and holding it, his Alex. hands. Hold up Figured for a, a big flop, man. huge double up to four million. Get a five of Jack of clubs. Now is the right time That's to order the lobster. Come on. Drink the shoes. <laughs> Too much? That's greedy. Five of diamonds. That's also greedy. We're just a seven. It's very greedy. Duek needs help here. How about just a deuce of spades? How about an ace? <laughs> Turn card is the king That's of clubs. Nice. That gives Fox in a full house. Trips now for Duek. Duek needs to hit one of his 
other cards. Ace to queen or a 10. He's got nine outs. Four million in the middle here. If Foxen wins this, Duek has got a mountain to climb, and it is One the four, eight of diamonds. Foxen with the double up. Duek down to just about four big blinds. Wow. Quite the brutal development mm. here for Duek. Yeah, he was already not in the greatest of moods after a recent downturn, and now he needs a whole lot of help to get back in the match. in the small blind, so he's already got 75k invested here. Nothing for Foxen on the button here. Six. All eyes Nine. on Duick. Ten, ten, Five. nine, seven. Four, and there it is. Duick pots. Parson and puts in the chips with Ace King six five and Duick with a pair of tens. Just slightly ahead here. He's going to need more than one double up, so let's see if this becomes the start of something. Could also be down a heads up play. If Parson deuce finds deuce a way to five. win this one. What did you add? I think I had 10 deuce, deuce, 5. That's good news. <laughs> Boxes 5. Mickey Duek looking for those tents to hold up. King in the window oh. right away for Parsonen. Oh, wow. Fair enough fight. 9-7 behind it, though, Very as Duick hits two pair. Damn, see? The this is the kind of sweat they're though. always talking about. Parsonen with 15 <laughs> outs. What about nine? Just end it. That's boring. It's our red card. for the <laughs> river. Car. All right, let's see if Parsonen can too. gain the lead on the turn here. It yeah. is the six of hearts. Yeah, you got some. And seven, now and the better two yeah. pair for Parson and got nine. Nine chances. As Duick nine, needs seven, eight, a nine, seven, seven, eight, or ten. Five. Ten outs Foresight. for the former main event finalist. PLO cash game specialist. Mickey Duick was so a chip leader for a long time. Diamond. Can he stay yeah, in the tournament? Yeah. River is the yeah. jack yeah. of yeah. diamonds, and that is it. We are down to heads up play as Mickey Duick exits in a third place. He takes home $161,000. Great run for him, but obviously, after having been a chip leader for quite a while here at this final table, this might be a disappointing finish for him as Foxen and Parson will get set to play heads up for a $120,000 pay both difference. All right, let's uh, show you some highlights. We'll be back in just a minute with heads up play here from the Pokego okay. studio. That's why they all gravitate towards PLO as Josh Arie finds Aces here in the under the gun position. Shout out to Robert in the chat. He loves our commentary. Robert, we love that you're hanging out with us. Very much appreciated as always. Shout out to everyone else who's with us. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know how your day is going as Parsonen looks down at Jack Jack 87. Comes along with the call, by the way. Also has the glasses to match the sweater. Donnie, as always, it is your task to find out the price of the sweater. Can Which we, one? Of Elis. Elis, okay. Uh, and can we please get some guesses in the chat? Because I think we're looking at about $1,200 right here. That's my first guess. Um, all right, flop comes out, heads up between Arya and Parson, and then there it is, top set for the Finnish pro. Aces in PLO, far more vulnerable than in No Limit Hold'em. If you're new to the game of Pot Limit Omaha, caution is always advised. Arya, however, can't simply give 
parceling credits for just a set of jacks. There are plenty of combinations of hands that he still has beat at this point. Unfortunately for the man from Georgia, he has stepped into it this time around. Donnie, always tough with aces. You know, no matter what flop, if it doesn't inc uh, inc like include an ace, it's always going to be difficult. It is for sure going to be difficult. I mean, these players, of course, I think they know how to navigate these spots, but Aria here, I mean, I, I want to say just because he's kind of on the shorter side here, he's got 770k right. behind, yeah, he's, the money's just going to go in and Parson <coughs> snaps him off. Team Lucky, Josh Aria is the captain of that team, he's going to need to get lucky here. Wow, this only hand real. number two at this final table. Bounty on the line, those are the red chips. By the way, you can see the red chips in front of each player, indicating how many players they've sent to the rail. Both Aria and Parson have sent many players to the rail, but in this very situation, Aria, only 5% to survive here. River card, the three Ooh, of clubs. Again. That's not gonna do it. Josh Again. Aria, our first casualty at this final table, busting out in sixth place. Parson and the rich get richer, breaks this one in. No. No. Pot raised there from Parson, just making sure the dealer understood his action. Ace Jack it's ten funny. nine. Quero going for it. Four. Four behind. about 1 million for Guerra to start this hand. Did make it 620 on the pot size three bet. Now Parson is gonna decide if he just wants to put the money in, play for it all and run the five cards or save it for a different spot. Cool. He's got a call, so here we go. Six. Three hundred ninety k behind for Guerra. <laughs> One point four out there. That's not a lot. All right, here's the flop. Eight nine mm -hmm. deuce. Guerra moves all in almost Tell me automatically. Did Parson has snapped okay. this off. Yeah. All right, Parson has snapped it off. Just want to make sure here he has the overpair. Fifty fifty. Displayed by our odds calculator. He's got the queens. Jack is gives him a queen high straight as well. Two. Eight. Two. Jack of hearts. Seven doesn't help. Yeah, Parson seven, seven, seven would give Guerra a higher straight. Yeah. I love how even the best in the world are slowly naming off the potential outs, king. and a king on the turn is safe from king. Parson and yeah. Guerra still with 13 you outs. Probably? Oh, I just hope it's that. I don't know what it actually <laughs> is. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry, nothing personal. I, that ladder is. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the studio. Right, Trophy on the table. Two players five. remaining, Alex Foxen and Elis Parsonen. Heads up for the title. Okay. 26 3. bigs 7. for Foxen, 42 for Parsonen. Let us know in the chat who you are rooting oh, two, for two, or who you six, think one. is going to win. Three, My name is Rem Pring. I'm still here with that. you, Donnie yeah. Peters, alongside me, and we got Jay Nandes in the house providing yeah. expert analysis. By the way, if you want to get better at Pot Limit Omaha, plomastermind.com slash poker go. Sign up for free right now and play around with their, their, fun, their fun software. You know, you get to really study in a very easygoing format. Nothing intimidating about PLO Mastermind, so go check it out right now. Uh, by the way, I want visual of the steak and lobster. I cannot understand how they're not quicker with this. Four, three, five on this first flop. 
Fox and Flops pair and straight draw. Backdoor spades as well. Jax for Parsonen. Still in the lead ever so slightly. So we're back to regular PLO, which means ICM is now not a concern. This is a winner takes it all situation, basically, like the, the prize money has been distributed. They're playing for how much remaining? Hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, one twenty-four between the two spots. He just made a light call in the turn with Jack Jack nine eight and hits a set on the river. The question is Foxen wants to follow through now. He does have a marginal block with a deuce, but more importantly he has no showdown. He only has a pair of fives at this point. 1.2. Wow. Boxing just Almost in the middle. swinging for the fences. This is very unlikely to work. I mean, Elise could consider that Boxing might even value a bit of worse hands. Oh, wow. Don't see that often, Parson and using one of his time bank chips. I think he's thinking about the lobster and why he's not <laughs> here yet. He's gonna call. He doesn't block the straight, so that's I think his main concern. He doesn't block the straight if Foxen only baits bets straights and bluffs. Then his hand doesn't do that well of a job of bluff catching. But a set is a set. And it's okay. top set as well. Call it has been made by Parsonen, and Foxen is going to be in a lot of trouble as the Finn takes a huge pot here right at the start of heads up play. Elis Parsonen up to 8.5 million chips. Damn. Heads up PLO, not something you see all too often. You ever get a chance to play some heads up? Yeah. I play mostly heads up when I play online these days. So that, that that's still being offered? People are still willing to play? I mean, we're play on, we play on six-packs tables, but yeah. Yeah, we play. Like, the good thing about heads up, I mean, here in Nevada, is like, you know usually who you play against, which is good. Just like safe and good. And uh, play sometimes against different regs. From Vegas, but not ten big blinds deep. What? Like here, boxing is only ten big blinds deep, so it is a special situation. But right. heads up poker is fun. You get to play almost every hand. It's a lot of action, and you got to think about really weak hands. If you play a full ring hold'em or PLO, you usually have like really good hands, and you have uh, a lot less decisions to make overall. I think here we saw Fox in limping and hauling a raise from the button. Not much left behind on the flop here. One million in the middle, 1.4 behind. Elis has flopped top here in a gut shot. He's gonna go with this hand. And boxing really depends on what the other card is. If the other card is a seven, like seven or an eight, I guess he has a spot and he calls. Uh, Elis bets like 10% of the pot or 20% of the pot. Yeah, Foxen has a gutter, so you cannot fold against the All in. 10 k shoves. Ace nine. Look at this. Parson makes the call, and Foxen announces ace nine. Parson with the gut shot, but oh, the problem is sixes. Foxen yeah. holds two That's sixes. <laughs> and the gloves. Oh. 
Problem is, he just win. can't win yet because the lobster is not here yet. So, <laughs> let us see some more Jack. hands. Yeah, that's a good card. Yeah, Jack's fine. Before we saw Foxen's Ace of Clubs, that would have been the worst card to see for Parson of all the cards. The only card, pretty much. Apart from a nine, I guess. Right. So, Foxen blocking a lot of stuff here. Deuce of Hearts on the turn. Oh, I thought you had Hearts for a second. Parson needs an offsuit six. Excuse me, he needs a six or a king to end the tournament right here on the spot. Otherwise, Foxen will be back up to 3.8 million. Could have a very quick one here, but unlikely at this point. Foxen in a great situation to double up. River card is a nine 4. of hearts. And there it is. Foxen with his double up. Got 25 big blinds now versus 43 big blinds. This is definitely a match. Still not very deep. Yeah, you will see a lot of limping on the button. There's an ante in the middle, gut position. You get a really good price to see the flop, or try to see the flop. So the strategy should primarily be limping a bunch and then raising some. But on the other side, you might also see Fox in trying to increase the variance if he thinks that Elis would do better playing flop turns and rivers then he might do better by just increasing the variance by 3-betting more or raising more pre. And I think from Ida's perspective, he's going to limp a huge amount, just trying to take this post-flop as much as possible. What's interesting about this is these ranges are incredibly wide, which means you have a lot of bluffs available and okay. you have a lot and you have some value. And you need to decide what hands are, are okay to bluff with, what is fin enough for like good enough to bet for fin value. This is not six max or eight max PLO. You might sometimes have two pair on a straight board. You might have a straight on a flush board and you still should value bet because it's very hard to make very good hands heads up. This is very, like people that play only tournaments are definitely not used to such wide ranges. You usually don't play just complete trashy hands pre, and we're gonna see a lot of that. And I think Elis is very comfortable with this idea. I don't know that much about Foxen's background in terms of heads up PLO. Foxen has definitely been heads up a lot. He's of course, one of the main no limit crushers, but it's definitely a way different ball game when you get four instead of two cards. And he's playing against one of the best, you know, hands down. He is one of the best in this format. Is that oh, something you pick up on when you <laughs> play against him? Like, I'm sure you've crossed paths with him before. Like, and, and what is it that makes him so good? I think he has. The, the, the combination you basically want is a really good mix of someone who knows the fundamentals but knows when to not follow them. And if you would ask a random guy in the poker room right now, that's how they would describe themselves, <laughs> but they don't know the fundamentals. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, of course I know GTO and theory <laughs> and odds, pot odds, and of course I know all these things, but I play on feel. <laughs> it's like he does that, but on the actual, like, you know, highest level possible. Right. So you saw in the final table, he was handcuffed. He had a middling stack size. Like he played solid, straightforward. This he didn't make uh, any mistakes pre. It was an exciting point, poker, six, but it was three, flawless one. poker. Now heads up is a different ball game. What we'll see here is a lot more uh, experience based poker. Reads, understanding the game, understanding when to apply pressure. If you can mix those two worlds, you uh, you can reach the top. Basically, you can't. You pretty much can't if you only have one. If 
you just make in PLO tournaments, you're playing 20 bit fans deep and you don't know how to play theoretically correct, you just can't win. It's like a no limit. If you, I don't know, call an open with 6 5 Pop. suited in the cutoff 20 big fans deep, you're just Owen. not going to win in tournaments. Fast. Wow, and Fox and Bets 525. Parson and steps on the Oof. gas. Mm. And Foxen is all what in. Look at the draws hands, and options That's and potential here. <laughs> Foxen, 18 Jackal. outs. Diamonds? What's the most outs you can have and still That'd be, be ugly. 20? Still 20? You can have a 20 card straight draw, yeah. I think. Uh, but then you can add the flush draw on top. Plugging your own outs. I know, I almost folded. <laughs> Definitely like Foxen's hand here, obviously, has so many outs, but. Again, is fun. The lobster energy is strong, so <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> Definitely. Sucks I can't turn you dead. That's true. <laughs> Fox definitely knows what he's doing. I can. Has a good yeah, understanding. <laughs> it's not going to matter, though. Uh, four on the turn would be disaster for Fox, and speaking of being dead. Turn card is the Deuce of Spades, and Foxen hits his flush. Now Parson is looking for a 10 or a 4. The only cards that can end this tournament, and if those cards don't show up, Alex Foxen all of a sudden is going to be back in the chip lead. Started this final table with the lead. Now he can reclaim it, and the King of, the King of Clubs on the river is going to do just one? that. Yeah. Alex Foxen, now the chip leader, with 7.2 million. Donnie, we've seen more all-ins without an elimination at this final table than the other ones combined. Yeah, that is true. I also think it's worth pointing out that uh, it's pretty impressive. Alex Foxen has made it to heads-up play given that he doubled up like four or five people <laughs> throughout the day, took a few big swings that may not have worked out, but always kind of came back. You know, he always fought back, and now he's here heads-up with the chip lead. And now just just about 16 big, so not the deepest. Shout out to Nicholas Fitzgerald. Welcome to the rail on YouTube. It's our little YouTube community. <coughs> you get some emojis. You get some additional content on YouTube as well. Most importantly, though, your name is in a fancy color, so we can see whenever you have questions. And like I said, those emojis. Like three, right? Fifteen big blinds for Elis. Should see a limp here. Just trying to see the flop. So decides to go for the race, which in my mind means he's not going to fold against the jam, but Foxen has a hand that can't really defend. Still heads up here inside the PokerGo studio. Uh, if you want to watch the most iconic cash game, you better head on over to PokerGo.com. New season airing now. Join now or upgrade. Use promo code hsp 12 half to save $30 on your first year of an annual plan. That is our best deal of the year, so you might as well just get it now. This offer expires this week, so jump on this while you can. We have new episodes airing every single week. And, of course, U.S. Poker coming up in just about 10 days, I believe. Seeing some more people ask about the lobster in the chat. No no word just yet on whether the lobster has arrived. When it does, I hope he puts it on the rail. Check. Flop here for Elis. Flops three pair. 
Bloxen has middle pair. It's also a limp pot, so he might take a stab. Decides to check back. Turn is the six of hearts. Pot announced by Parson. Fox and lets it go, and Parson gets a little bit closer to even again. Doesn't take a whole lot when the stacks are shallow. We're playing 100k, 200k. That is usually the level, Donnie, where this thing comes to an end. Yeah, it's been rare that we've gotten past this level. Pretty much in all the <laughs> all the series. Jack four deuce, two spades. Foxen the one holding the spades and a jack. And there it is, both a <laughs> jack and a spade on the turn for Foxen. He has a lock on this hand. Parson and coming along to the river for 200k, drawing dead. Why do you think Parson was inclined to call the turn here? I think his opponent is very polarized. He either has a flush or nothing. If that's true, then Elis has the best hand. And he also has oh, really? equity against the flush. He could hit a nine or a jack. His hand makes a pretty bad call for the river, though. But in PLO, value betting thresholds are oftentimes pretty high. Both of these players have been playing for uh, over a week now, pretty much every day for mostly 8, 10 hours, 12 hour days. It definitely marks the end of the, the PLO series here with the 25k coming up. So I'm sure in some of the moments their brains will be a bit fried. <laughs> it's always fascinating how Check. When, when you get closer to a tournament ending, you sort of almost want it to be over, even though that's when most of the money is on the line. Yeah. King 7-3, rainbow flop here. Of course, Fox and, and Parson and very well versed in the live grind. So I can only imagine they are fully locked in here. But especially when you see the larger field multi-day events, some of the less experienced players are getting to a point where they're sort of over it they're 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 just you know maybe making some loose decisions because of fatigue and if you're a pro you could definitely take your advantage from that it happens all the time 
People take losses in different ways, long days in different ways. And uh, that can also set people apart, of course. But these guys are no, no strangers to long days at the poker table, for sure. What's the longest session you've ever played? Not not that long. Like, surely over for 24 hours, but like nothing super crazy. Was that live or online? Live. Yeah, online. What? I mean, live. Yeah. I, I sat with some VIPs, you know, until they left. <laughs> 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 Sometimes that is more than 24 hours. It happened before in Vegas. and uh, But I'm not too unhappy. I mean, I'm... I don't know, when I play, I prefer very long sessions versus shorter sessions. It just feels it feels like an additional level of challenge. If all the players on the table play long, it is another element. If they obviously change all the time, it's not. But you have this very often. At higher stakes, the table stays the same for a very long time. Maybe one player, two player will change. But the main setup is the same for 10 hours plus. And then it's kind of cool because... There are different dynamics that develop. People get tired, tilted. You kind of know what happened today to them. Are they trying to lock up a win? Are they trying to uh, win back their, or chase some losses? Do they think in a certain way about yourself because you showed down certain bluffs or whatever it is? So there's an additional element that comes into play that you don't get if you just play like two, three hours, which I, I personally definitely enjoy. So when I play live cash, I'm more on the end of have a hard time to quit versus keeping sessions short. Right. Not not because I'm tilled or anything, but just because I got I went to the poker room, I got on the list maybe, I waited, I'm in the game, I have my chips, I know my opponents, now I'm finally set up. Now I wanna play, like play for long. So what what if you sit down, you lose three buy ins in three orbits? Does that make you wanna stay or does that make you wanna go? It really depends how I lost them. <laughs> if I lost them because I play bad, then I feel pretty tilted overall. So that would make me more inclined to quit. Um, if I lose because the game, because it just happened for some reason, and the game is still the same or is good, then I have, I have, it's affecting me very little, because it's, it's not something that I'm angry about. I'm rarely angry about the game, because. That's just silly in some ways. I know for a non, uh, if you're not so experienced, maybe some people in the chat are like, oh, I'm always angry at the run out or I'm bad beat or whatever. But I mean, if you play for many years, like these things just happen. But what gets me more is when I play bad. So I have to take ownership over these decisions and sit with them, but keep playing. That feels sometimes annoying and difficult. I always applaud players like yourself who can stay calm under duress in, in, in situations like that because the natural response, no matter how you lose, is to be at least a bit down on yourself. And, you know, then, then it's the secondary element of like, does that make me want to battle or does that make me want to just go to the movie theater, eat some popcorn and try again tomorrow? Because I, I, I could see an argument for both sides. Oh, for sure. Depends on the day and, and on, on the person. I thought about this today because I was playing head before I came here. I was playing heads up against the guy that I played yesterday until like one a.m. or whatever. So we were, we were like re meeting up online and we have like these long sessions. It's pretty fun. Right. And the main thing that I thought about today was if you play poker, <laughs> you're expecting to get hurt. Like that is the whole point. It's like stepping into a ring. Like, yeah, you want to throw the better punches, but you're not there hoping no one is going to hit you. Like, you will get hit. I that is the that's part of the game. Space Odyssey, Memento. So it, it, it's going to hurt you more long term if you're trying to mm -hmm. not get hit. Uh, Let's say you avoid like running big bluffs. You well, avoid running any calls. There are a bunch of you, you avoid there's something being thin in exactly certain like spots. This, that just like appears, and that's what's supposed to be the dawn of mankind. <laughs> this like weird black box that just appears one night, and they all start using tools and it's a cool movie okay classic what was it called 2001 a space odyssey i told you donnie it's it's a weird movie but it's but it's good watch this is
This is the, the, the vortex that yes. if you break it, a dimension <laughs> opens up into outer space. And uh, Foxen making the reference to it, to a two, 2001 Space Odyssey. I think you should try and break it. See, see, what, see what happens. See what happens? See what sort of portal opens up know. to another universe. That movie is from 1968. Yeah. That's a beauty. Whew. Donnie, I have this weird thing, and I'm not sure if you mm, can follow me on this me. thought process. I cannot <laughs> watch old movies. You told me this before. It drives me crazy. Yeah, you told me this before. Like, the, well, I don't know what it is, but I, I, people are like, oh, this movie is like a 9 rating out of 10 on IMDb, and I just try it, and I'm like, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> just because of the way it looks. Like, like, a, like take the old Star Wars movies. Yeah, Unwatchable. Y you... You said that the other day. Yeah. That exact quote. I'll say it again, probably in a few <laughs> weeks. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, we know how this came up again. Producer Aiden is a big fan of Dune, and uh, I watched Dune, the first Dune, like a couple weeks ago because it's on like, I don't know, Paramount or HBO, whatever. And I watched Dune two in the movie theater last week. And then Aiden, Aiden asked me, "Did you watch the original?" And I thought he meant the first one that came out a few years ago. And I'm like, I guess. It's old, old And he one. goes, oh, it's from like, whatever, 1960-something. I'm like, there's no fucking chance <laughs> I'm going to watch that. Just not, never happening. I mean, you really have to love the genre if you <laughs> yeah. oh. watch that. Are you going to watch it? No. No, of course I not. I don't know if you were going to. The only old movie that I really. Aiden. The only movie, old movie I really enjoyed was the, the original Ocean's Eleven. Have you watched that? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. worth a watch. I watched it after I watched. Yeah, yeah same, the newer one. But yeah, but that's because it's Vegas, and it's like. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Russell in the chat says, "Back with pizza." Russell, you're giving me ideas for my dinner tonight. What is he saying? That he has pizza? Yeah, he. he I, I think, think he, he left he earlier left. to go pick it up. <laughs> and now he's back. That's the spirit. There's only one thing on my mind. It's lobster. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do the lobster. It's just You haven't earned it, it today? <laughs> no, it's just there's there's certain price ranges that's just too feels irresponsible. <laughs> I can't go to lemongrass and get like a hundred and sixty dollar lobster. It's just I mean I never tried it, but I mean how many big lines is that in your game? Come on. I don't know. Like, how good can a lobster be? I mean it could be really good I guess. You're 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 being too you're being too reasonable now. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I should try the lobster. Sh uh, one of my goals was to try the posh. I never ate that posh so far. Um, I like burgers, though. But what about the $100 burger? Oh, see, that... But see, it makes no sense, But right? that, that, that makes no sense because the, the $20 burger is, is going to be just as good. Because you don't... You can't taste the gold. Right. It makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, by the way, we got some poker being played here. Fox yeah. and making the 600K. Parson comes with a 3-bet to 1.8 million. Lots of money going into the middle here. We're looking at very short stack play. So like <laughs> pocket queens, as, as as it sounds, it kind of like goes back to hold'em rules in some ways, where these big pairs are super powerful if you're at 10 to 20 big blinds, or let's say below 20 big blinds. Mm -hmm. well, and Elis is going to pick up a nice pot here by just three betting and jamming the flop. Oh, he gets called. Wow. Nothing so far. <laughs> Fair Nothing enough. so far for Foxen. He needs an ace or a king. Are you Four. surprised to see him call here, or is the price just... Only even ask for a I didn't Six. eyeball the odds Only precisely. It might just be a fine <laughs> call. Just a four. I mean, good news for him is that his ace and king are live. G good thing for him, the steak and lobster just arrived for Parsonen. I saw the bag That's that it's going to have the food in it. That might um, be the power play. A ace or a king for Foxen to end this thing. Good dude. Small cards. He wants small cards. Small cards. Parson in the lead here, looking to double up and get back into the chip lead. A six would help. Turn is the jack of spades. Right, that is small enough. <laughs> Foxen is an ace or king to end the tournament right here on the spot. Parson going to enjoy his dinner at the table or away from the table? That is the question. River card. The jack of hearts and like the too. lobster will come into play. 1.125. And then this back. Definitely back on top too. Mm. 
Yep. How long is the latest still? 5.45. 545. What's the time now? Players are playing on a delay, so they have a little more time than you might think yep. to register for the 25k, which is our championship event. I can only imagine these guys really want to hop into that one. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, especially Parson, because... I mean, if he wins this, he's going to be up on top of the leaderboard. Right now, he's going to be in second place on the leaderboard. So getting into that event is important for him if he does want to chase down that series leaderboard title. For sure. And I think he cares. I saw a documentary like a year ago with Elis as well in there. And he says, like, One? Uh -oh. he used to be a cash game player, but now he's really after the trophies and he wants to win the titles and be on top. So I'm sure he cares. We still have 45 minutes till Reg closes, right? They are both now getting concerned about registration for the 25K. Yeah, cool. I just I need to pay the food. Uh, 62 entries so oh, far shit. in the 25K. Early big stacks include Seth Davies, some guy named Dan Legrano, Isaac Haxton, and Sam Soverell. Check. Okay. Check. Goes for the bluff. And he just has only one pair. Can he sniff this out? So this is a spot where Foxen says he has a straight only. So in that sense, it's kind of hard to decide which hands you want to call if he decides to call. 8-6. And again, it might seem like, well, he only had a king. How, how can he ever call he loses against two pair and a set and a straight, obviously. But the reality is his opponent is representing a straight. So anything, any pair, like top pair or mid pair, will be fine to three call. You just have to decide which side cards you want to yeah. choose. Yeah, 3-5, 7-5. ended up having king 9 9 so he's blocking jack 9 blocking king jack three it's under see a 3x open by foxen he just has a very strong hand heads up ace king 7 5 double with low suits, goes for the three bet. We're talking here about 15 big blinds for Foxen, a bit more. I don't know what that last card is, but most likely it's a connected card to the 985 and therefore good enough to call. Sure. There should also be some suit in there. So maybe like a seven of clubs, ten of diamonds, six of. Oh, it's an ace. That's fine, One too. One seven seventy five behind, right? Yep. Half pot behind. Off to the flop. Another juicy one. Yeah, it is. I noticed that. Three spades on the flop here. Neither player with spades. This is the... This is what you dream of when you have Elise's hand. <laughs> Just I got these hearts, I got these diamonds, <laughs> the ace, the king, what is the flop? It's queen eight deuce with three spades. Not happy about this one. Checks. It 
is money going to go hit in here from either player? I mean, when Elis checks, he could have, like, he has a hand that probably doesn't fold against the bed or just the hand that is behind the, uh, the eight. So just going for a check back is fine with ace eight. Like, you might have the best hand. Probably not. But even if you don't, do you have good blockers to do anything? Not really. So you just take your showdown. Elis now with the pairing deuce. He could try to make an eight fold, maybe a queen. It's just like if you bet, you're kind of in no no man's land heading head into the river. You have bad blockers, you have no connection. So probably just a give up spot. And uh, Foxen, like, much didn't change from the flop. Just check back and trying to get through the showdown with ace-eight. I think they're just trying to balance their timings here. But this is a uh, check back all day long. And this is actually something that could change things. Now, Elis has the best hand suddenly. <laughs> if you guys don't know PLO that well, <laughs> you take three from the flop or from the board. And in this case, deuce, 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 ace, king is better than deuce, 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 ace, nine. So, Persinan steps ahead. He has no reason to bet, though. Ace King could easily be the best hand, and if not, would a full house really fold? Fine. He does go for the buff, for the bluff. Foxen just can't call, like he's losing to some of the bluffs, like in this case. Foxen looks yeah, a little bit annoyed <laughs> with how that one ultimately played out. Yeah, it's almost like he knew kind of he had the best hand until the Pretty river. And yeah. now he can't call because he loses against the most obvious bluff, which is ace king. Could have ace high, though. I need something. Foxen now. Sub 10 bigs. Doesn't doesn't mean anything, Donnie. This is Paul Limit Omaha. I'm just we're saying. They're just gonna get it in 60-40, and Fox is gonna zone. double up. That's danger zone. <laughs> Definitely is. Donnie, what do you think the chances are that we're gonna see a PLO player such as Parson and make his way into the PGT Championship free roll? Like, is there enough points up for grabs for PLO players? I think so. Yes. Um, well, one, there's this series, right? Um, I think Sammy Cipolla, who's already won two events at this series, is inside the top ten of the leaderboard. I think he's got 544 points, I believe. Um, if Parson does win this, he would be have a little bit more points, 566 or something like that. So he would also be inside the top ten. We'll let this hand play out. And yeah, then we'll, exactly. We'll get back to it. Because Foxen, in need of a double up, just announced... He has the nuts. Six. He's got a hold. Parson yeah, looking so for greedy. a heart. Got backdoor Broadway you as well. You ask for the for like the ace. <laughs> He's right for the six. This is less greedy than a heart. We'll also talk about the good sweat cards. Foxen is going to need a clean run out here to stay in this event. Even if he wins, Parson is still going to have a hefty lead here. Seven of spades on the turn. Doesn't change the dynamics as Parson is still looking for a heart. A heart would end it right here on the spot. Can Parson find five. it hmm? and win nine his second five. tournament yeah. of the series? River card. The nine of spades and Alex Foxen is the one to double up as play continues. Heads up, PLO. You said it, Fox, and we just get in. his money in and double up. That's exactly what I said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. 
getting, getting worried about this lobster. It's getting cold. <laughs> yeah. I want to see. I want to see the steak and lobster on the table. Double butter, please. The butter. The butter is actually going to set and harden. Yeah. Which uh, is an that issue. That is true. That is very Big true. Big punt. Big punt incoming, yeah. guys. Yeah. Open that lobster. Oh, but th this this series combined with everything that's going on at the WSOP, there's a chance that we I do can't run stop back. I such a big edge. This series again later on in the year. Obviously, the idea that Super High Roller will PLO could come back. We'll Fernando already yeah, we'll, pointed we'll, we'll, out the we'll, we'll, nine we'll, we'll, PLO Aria High Rollers like that count towards the PGT. We so still have heaps there's of There's enough. There. You got to figure this is too much fun. going to be here in the it summer is. playing all <laughs> the big PLO <laughs> stuff. So I think somebody can get into the top 40 just, just from the PLO stuff. Eight eight seven here. Two clubs. Foxen with three eights. Flush draw four. Parson in. Yeah, Foxen bets the flop. Goes for a small bet. His hand is good. Like he doesn't block the straight draws that can call or raise the flop. Flush draws are also possible, diamond draws are possible. Pretty much what Elis has. And Elis could go either way, check raise or call, it's both fine. Decides to go for the ladder. Goes for the check raise on the flop. And Foxen with an eight. Generally the play is to call. You could make an argument to click it back to get some of the draws out of the pot. Like in this case, uh, Parsonen has 37% equity. And you will leave that unrealized by just coming over the top right now. Now, if you had a boat or if you had okay. Jack 10-8 or 10-9-8, you could just call. Because when your opponent improves on the straightening cards, you make a boat. But in this case, you don't. So if the turn comes in 9 or a... The turn comes a 5 or a 6 or a jack or a 10. Foxen is still in the 50. unknown. He does go for the quote unquote click back. I like to see it because now he's about to deny equity to Parsinen with his straight draw flush draw and the boat outs with the deuces. Unless Elis wants to stuff it in or call, which is pretty unlikely there's a decent chance he's either drawing dead or very thin. Hila says no thank you. Oh. Saw so Alex Fox in there flip over the ace of spades so these two will play one more hand before the blinds go up. Has to feel good. You have to turn over one card as the ace of spades. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Is that the beginning of the good run? So that means the blinds will increase in one hand after this hand. Yep. I'm still Big blown mistake. away that Parson is not touching his steak and lobster. It's for sure gotten cold by now. Are you waiting for Max? Right. Do you? Standard. Got coins for me? Ooh. Wow. The audible. <laughs> looked like a raise. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a raise, but <laughs> Foxen quickly called it out. Hmm. That's scary enough. <laughs> Ten eight five rainbow Foxen open ended with seven six. Kay. 
board pairs on the turn with the eight. Not a whole lot of action here in this hand. Yeah, Foxen could bet, could check back. Once he well, uh, could check, once he checks, it's kind of hard to play against the bet. On the other side, his hand is also not very strong. No pair, just a 7-6, no diamond. Goes for the bet. He just picks up a flush draw, no pair. He has a he has seventy three percent equity with no pair. It's kinda hard to know where you're at at the moment. He is winning against seven six, jack nine, queen nine, seven nine. Ace of spades on the river. King high versus king high. I was going to say, n neither player is going to feel good about checking this and giving up. If you're Parsonon, you can't really check behind, right? No. Whoever bets here is going to win. Uh, Foxen doesn't block the diamonds, so he has a good case for betting. His opponent can have jack nine, queen jack, just general diamonds that are going to fold. He's going to pot it. Beautiful. And you just can't do anything about it, of course, with king high. Aggression pays off here. Here's a look at Octopi Poker, who wants to send you to the Poker Masters. We're doing a free social media giveaway. For a chance to win, go to pokergo.com slash winmasters. Terms and conditions do apply, but please check it out. It is free to enter, and maybe we'll see you play in the 2024 Poker Masters as Octopi wants to send you to Las Vegas. Look at that, Donnie. The Javier's bag is sitting Hurts. there. I am I'm appalled by this behavior. I see people in the chat also outraged at the fact that he's letting his food get cold. I mean, what are you gonna do? Now I, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm about to walk in there <laughs> <laughs> and just grab the bag and say, "Hey, this is too disrespectful." Boxing, pot, seven fifty, ace jack, ten deuce. Makes sense. And this is a spot now where leading out is going to be uh, an important part of the strategy. This is spot, uh, he flops an inside straight draw and a flush draw. So five, six, seven to the straight diamonds to a flush. Fox and complete air ball. Uh, didn't connect good enough to actually bet. He doesn't have a high diamond. He doesn't have a king, an eight, a four. It's a very unfortunate flop. Just time to surrender and see a turn. When he does bet, this won't en end well because Elis has a perfect hand to go for the check raise. He has no showdown, but Pretty reasonable draw. There's 2.25 in the million. We could see him call, but just ripping it. What? It's gonna make this much easier. And with the king of diamonds on the on the board, it's less likely gonna run into a flush draw. And we completely crushed by king x of diamonds. Picks up a nice pot there. And contrary to no limit hold'em. The prefab aggressor doesn't just get to see bet a lot of different boards. Because you have four cards, it really matters how you connect. And your bluffs are primarily centered around blocker effects. So do you block top pair? Do you block the flush draw? Do you block the straight draw? If none of those things are true, it makes it a lot more likely your opponent does and therefore will continue. We also call this effect the mirroring effect. So think about what hands for value would you bet, and then your bluffs mirror that in some fashion. For example, you would bet the not flush draw, so the not flush draw blocker is it mirroring that value range. So it makes sense to bet the hand. Same thing is true for top set. Top pair is the mirror hand of top set. Two pair, middle pair is the mirror hand of that hand as well. Elis now with the chip lead, raising it up with a nice looking jack 985 double. Makes a lot of sense. And Foxen makes a quite loose defense. There are antis. 
Two and I would say that's the point. It's quite light, but it's, it's it is it works, I guess. Jack sticks deuce on this flop. Parsonen catches top pair. Gut shot for Foxen with some back doors. There's so much in the middle that just potting and picking up this pot is more valuable than trying to pot control at this point. And that's why he just goes for the pot size bet. Yeah, big pressure from Parsonen. Who likes to keep Foxen back into a corner. It's really funny right now. Foxen has won 36 hands. Parson has won 28 hands at this final table. Foxen, of course, started out playing tons of hands in the beginning as he was the chip leader. Parson barely won any hands in the first two hours. Wow. The next big one is 400k. <laughs> That's what it says. Uh. Yeah, they want to. We want to get you guys into the 25k. I think once the production saw the lobster, they started increasing the blind levels to higher levels quicker. <laughs> I'll be shocked if they make it, make it to the next level. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, final two guaranteed $224,000. First place is 348. So we're playing heads up for a difference of $124,000. What do we have here working? I think Elis has a pair in a straight draw. So he has a six and he has seven, eight for the nut gut shot. And then Foxen has a low gutter and a seven blocker. I mean, Foxen could let his hand go on the button as well. Queen seven reduces really, really bad. Goes check check on the flop. Elis can go either way. Bet, check. Could even check raise the turn all in or check call. And Foxen doesn't have anything to work with really. I think he, he just wants to surrender because even if he bets the turn, like what hands, like what cards will he be bluffing on the river given that he has no removal to anything relevant? Elis has a flush on the river, he also has three diamonds. What? Goes for the pot size bet, unblocks the queen jack, which can call maybe a hand like king 10 with a diamond or so. Foxen has to obviously fold. So he is here chipping away. <laughs> I don't know what that means. He's thinking of the lobsters yeah. getting cold, 100%. There's two locked in to even think about eating. <laughs> he was Are so they confident. On the break now? He no, thought the Should be soon. Asking, asking for the break. <laughs> yeah. They are getting close to that reg closing break in the yeah. 25k, so. Well, Fox has nine big blinds, so there's a good chance he'll be all in again soon. So much in the, in the middle already. I mean, I get it. I wouldn't eat in front of camera, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's a negative free roll, for sure. I mean, what do you mean? Phil Helmuth has made his whole <laughs> brand out of it. <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> Seven, deuce, six. Both players with top pair. Parson has top Oop. two. And backdoor spades for Foxen. Oh, wow. This is trouble for Foxen. He was probably hoping seven, six. to see yeah. a draw of some kind, but uh, Parson also has a seven. Backdoor spades. And you have a five. <laughs> Parson in a great spot oh. here. Four outs here for Alex Foxen, or else this will be Elis Parson's tournament. Haven't seen too many big bad beats. In these all-in showdowns, the favorite has come out on top most of the time. Parson now looking to close it Four. out and win his second Four event eight. of the series. 
Four of spades. That's uh, that's the, the card. Still rooting for a sweat. Here's a turn. It's the ace of clubs. Fox and now with some additional outs. A five and ace or queen would keep him in the tournament. Elis Parson and one card away from winning his second event at the PGT PLO series. Can he close it out? And the answer is yes, he can. Again. GG indeed, Alex Foxen put up a great fight, started as the chip leader, but can ultimately... Take pictures and stuff after, after there is a... Like, I'm going to play for 10 minutes there. Yeah. All right, so okay, Elis Parson thanks. is going to run on over and make sure he gets into the 25k steak and lobster in hand double butter don't forget tomorrow we are back 9 p.m yeah. eastern time 6 p.m pacific my name is rem krink and my donnie peters alongside me big shout out to jay nandes fernando habegger back in the mix tomorrow he's the man behind plo mastermind you can check them out on plo mastermind.com slash poker go you can practice pot limit omaha for free don't miss out it's a fantastic product from Las Vegas, I want to wish you a good night, and we'll see you tomorrow when there's a lot more money on the line in the 25K version of this very event. Event number nine, the final event on the calendar. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you tomorrow.